The University of Minnesota has a proud football history, but most college football fans know little or nothing about those long-ago accomplishments. They're certainly learning more about this year's Golden Gophers. 8-0, ranked number 17, powered there on the arm of quarterback Tanner Morgan and the boat-rowing enthusiasm of Coach P.J. Fleck. Today, they face a team everyone knows, Penn State. The fourth-ranked Nittany Lions are also 8-0, led by the deep ball combination of quarterback Sean Clifford and receiver K.J. Hamler. It is early. It is cold. It is a critical Big Ten battle with major college football playoff implications. It's Penn State and Minnesota right now. You're watching ESPN College Football presented by Track Phone, part of Veterans Week on ABC, brought to you by USAA. Welcome everyone to Minneapolis for what is without question the biggest game in the 10-year history of TCF Bank Stadium. Minnesota hosting number four Penn State. P.J. Fleck, the coach, calls it one of the most important games in the proud history of Minnesota football. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Sean McDonough along with Todd Blackledge. Delighted to have you with us. We'll be joined shortly by Holly Rowe. Todd, great atmosphere here. Great anticipation. It's a Minnesota team undefeated, but ranked number 17 in the first college football playoff rankings. That is the worst of any undefeated Power 5 team in the history of the playoff. They're not getting a lot of respect. At least they don't feel they are here locally. They haven't played a strong schedule. That changes today. Are they a talented enough team to beat Penn State? I think they are. I think they're a really good football team. What I've seen on film, they're well coached. They're fundamentally sound. They don't do things to get themselves beat. Don't commit turnovers or penalties. And they've got some really good players. And I think they've got a chance to answer a lot of questions today. We've got a senior running back in Rodney Smith running behind a big offensive line nearing 1,000 yards. they got a pair of wide receivers in Rashad Bateman and Tyler Johnson. I think the best duo Penn State will have seen this season. Big play, guys. On defense, Antoine Winfield Jr. leads the Big Ten with five interceptions, an outstanding player, and Carter Coughlin, one of their senior leaders on the defensive line. This is a team that is on a mission, and they have a chance to make a big statement today. Indeed, they do against a Penn State team that perhaps has exceeded expectations as well. Uh, they were number 15 in the country when the season began. Up to number four in the first playoff ranking. That was a surprise to some ahead of Clemson. Very tough schedule left, but one of the reasons why perhaps they are a surprise to some is the outstanding quarterback play. Yeah, Sean Clifford's been outstanding. This is his third year in this offensive system, but his first year as a starting quarterback. And a lot of people thought, what's going to happen without Trace McSorley? Well, you look at the stats compared to the first eight games, Sean Clifford better than Trace McSorley. Everybody knew Penn State's defense was going to be legit, and they are. But what Sean Clifford has done with this offense has been the difference for Penn State. since 1941. Settle in for a great day of college football. Penn State and Minnesota right after this. It looks, sounds, and feels like a big game because it is. You're watching the Big Ten on ABC. Penn State tied for first in the Big Ten East with Ohio State. Minnesota leading the Big Ten West. Perhaps this is a preview of the conference title game. These two teams certainly hope so. A lot of football to be played between now and then. Minnesota won the toss and deferred. So the Gophers will kick off. K.J. Hamler back deep. One of the most dangerous return men in the country. Sean, I think one of the most important things for Minnesota in this game, particularly early, is managing the adrenaline, managing the moment. And they'll get a great opportunity right now kicking the hammer. Grant Ryersey kicks off, and it goes out of bounds. Well, a rough start for Minnesota. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, Penn State is 8-0 in part because they've had great consistency. 18 of their 22 starters have started all eight games, but today they have got some shakeups in their lineup. Antonio Shelton, their defensive tackle who started every game, is suspended after a spitting incident against Michigan State. Coach Franklin suspended him, supported by the Big Ten. Micah Parsons, their leading tackler, will not start today after what they're calling a behavioral modification issue. He's expected to come in the second or third series. And the biggest 
News, Noah Kane, the leading rusher who had worked his way up the depth chart to start his first game last week. He is questionable today. Coach said he is an emergency situation only. He is here and dressed and did participate in warm-ups. Well, they feel that they have depth on the defensive line to take care of the absence of Shelton. They're certainly deep at running back. They've been rotating four. And Parsons will likely sit out very little time. So here's Sean Clifford from the 35-yard line. The play fake and the strike incomplete. Trying to zip it in to Justin Shorter, who was covered by Coney Durr. Clifford, red shirt, sophomore from Cincinnati out of St. Xavier High School, where he won a state title as a senior. 276 yards per game of total offense. Number one in the Big Ten and number 23 in the country. Accurate thrower, good decision maker, and can hurt you with his feet as well. He has more rushing attempts than any player on their team. Steps up, takes off. Weaves across midfield and gets chopped down after a 17-yard gain by Antoine Winfield, the outstanding defensive back, their leading tackler. Well, you mentioned it. He's got more rush attempts than any of their running backs. He's a very good runner. He's faster than he looks. He's faster than people give him credit for. And he knows how to find openings to run the football. He can get down the field. He had a 58-yard rush against Buffalo earlier this year. Throwing deep. Single coverage. Jump ball. And it is intercepted by Antoine Winfield. His sixth of the season. Well, sometimes you mess with fire, you get burned. You think you got a matchup you like, right? Justin Shorter against Antoine Winfield, a safety. Not when the guy has five interceptions coming into the game. He's always around the football. He knows how to make plays on the football. And he just went up higher than a much taller receiver in Justin Shorter to make the play for the Gophers. He leads the Big Ten with six interceptions, four now in the last three games. Most in that span of the country. Only Douglas Coleman of Texas Tech has more interceptions for the season. He has seven. So the crowd ignited early. Tough field position for Tanner Morgan and the Golden Gophers offense from their own five. Rodney Smith, part of a deep running back group, runs over Lamont Wade, who made the tackle after a nine-yard game. Very big offensive line that really, since their first bye week in between Georgia Southern and Purdue, they kicked into a whole new gear in terms of running the football. Mm. And they are a very confident group running behind that big offensive line. All of them 6'5 or taller. They average 340, helped by the mammoth right tackle, Daniel Falele, who's 6'9, 400 pounds. Smith has the first down and a couple more. Cam Brown made the tackle. There's Tanner Morgan, like Sean Clifford from the Cincinnati area. He's from Union, Kentucky. Said he can drive to downtown Cincinnati in 15 minutes. 12 and 2 as the starting quarterback here at the University of Minnesota. They list him at 6'2. He admitted yesterday he's 6 feet and 1 half inch. <laughs> very honest admission. We don't get that very often in yeah. our meetings with the players to get honesty not just admissions that they are shorter than listed throw on target another first down Rashad Bateman the sophomore from Tifton Georgia they think is going to be one of the all-time greats here well first of all watch Rodney Smith the running back with the block to help out the quarterback right there helps out on Windsor and that opens up the slant they throw a lot of slants off the play action to these big bodied receivers and again the combination of Bateman and Tyler Johnson as good as there is in the Big Ten there is a flag down on the play the officials led by Mark Kluzinski sorting it out there is no foul for an result of the play is a first down. I guarantee you that's something that James Franklin clued the officials into before the game because it's a lot of RPO off the run game with Minnesota. They've been called for a couple linemen downfield. They get that three to four yard area that can be kind of a gray area at times, but that's a big part of Minnesota's pass game. So the play stands, 15 yard gain. 
Morgan in the offense move from their own five yard line out to the 33 and down to the 34 on the carry by Rodney Smith out of Jonesboro Georgia number three all time in rushing here behind two greats Daryl Thompson and Lawrence Maroney and over the last four averaging 141 per game it is a team you mentioned the bye week it's a team that has dramatically improved in running the yeah. football as the season's gone along all of a sudden the outside zone play kicked in they had been working on it all season they're using it to great impact lately the blitz is picked up there's an open man it's Rashad Bateman and he is gone touchdown Minnesota 66 yards what a read by Tanner Morgan there was a blitz off the slot Sean he saw it so did Bateman and they made a perfect adjustment to it. Watch, there's a blitz. John Reed comes up on the short receiver. The safety is late getting over. Late getting over to make the play. Tanner Morgan and Bateman read it quickly, and he got the football for the touchdown. Well, Lamont Wade came on a blitz, and Shannon Brooks, the running back, did a great job picking it up. Kirk Sharaka, the offensive coordinator, told us if I hate to leave backs in the block, but against Penn State, you have to do it. And that's why they did do it. They played a big part in a 66-yard touchdown. Seventh of the year for Bateman. Longest play of the season against Penn State. It all started with the interception by Winfield. 95 yards on the drive and a great start for Morgan and the Gophers. You can watch today's game in 4K on DirecTV and on Comcast. It's the Samsung QLED TV 4K game of the week. It's the first touchdown given up by Penn State in the first quarter this season. They've given up three points all year in the opening quarter. And it leaves Wisconsin and Ohio State as the only teams now that have not allowed a first quarter touchdown this season. Ryerson kicks off for the second time. This one returnable from the five for K.J. Hamlin. Room straight up the middle and taken down at the 31-yard line. Here's today's unexpected outcome brought to you by ExxonMobil. Well, it's perfect design. Here's Lamont Wade coming on the blitz. That's going to send John Reed here and the running, the wide receiver here, and Garrett Taylor is going to be late getting over from his safety spot. It takes the back picking up the blitz. It takes the quarterback and receiver being on the same page. And it ends up being a touchdown for Minnesota early in the ballgame. For Rashad Bateman, talked to P.J. Fleck yesterday, he said Rashad is special. And a 7-0 lead for Minnesota. The toss to Journey Brown, and he's tackled by Carter Coughlin. Oh, the most productive defensive lineman in the history of the Minnesota program. 21 and a half career sacks for the senior from Eden Prairie. And scoring first is a good omen for the Gophers under Coach Fleck. The fast start was so important on both sides of the ball. They got the interception, then they get the touchdown drive on their first possession. Couldn't script a better start if you're P.J. Fleck. Minnesota likes to play with the lead. They like to milk the clock. James Franklin said it's important to get an early lead against Minnesota. Speed them up a bit. Clifford's throw off target for Jahan Dotson. It'll be third down and six. Well, it's interesting. When we talked to Ricky Ronnie yesterday, the offensive coordinator of Penn State, we asked, who else in your receiving core do you think can step up? He said, Justin Shorter. We think he's going to have a big game today. First two times they tried to throw to him, he had a drop. And he got beat on an interception. Right now, he's not on the field on this third down play. Four defensive ends in the game now. They move a couple of defensive ends inside. They have speed along that defensive line. Clifford out of the gun. Five receivers. Sean has time. He's on target, has a first down to Pat Fryermute, one of the best tight ends in the country. Their second leading receiver for the year with 26. Well, apparently there was a timeout call by 
Minnesota. So they'll try third down again right after this. Two to 41, and then again from 1945 to 50, the hiatus was as Coach Beerman served in the Marines during World War II. College Football Hall of Famer, led in the five of the seven national championships in Minnesota history, none since 1960. So the timeout call just before the snap on the last play. Penn State thought it had converted a first down. They'll have to do it again. Hard to hear with deafening noise in this sellout crowd. Clifford on target again. Fryermuth broke free, and he's in to go for territory at the 45-yard line. A gain of 20 for the sophomore from Merrimack, Massachusetts. Nice job of recognition. Winfield lined up over Fryermuth, but then he blitzed. And Sean Clifford saw it quickly and got the football to the right spot. Got it in between two defenders. Here's Journey Brown. He breaks tackles. He has lots of running room. He has a touchdown. Penn State with the quick response. 45 yards for Journey Brown. And they're an extra point away from a seven all time. Excellent block by the left tackle, Rasheed Walker. But then you're going to see a missed tackle right up here. The safety, Jordan Howden, is going to miss a tackle. He's unblocked. He misses the tackle. And Journey Brown makes him pay for it. Penn State answers quickly with an explosive play of their own. This is an offense built on explosive runs and passes. Here's Jake Pettiger for the extra point to tie it. Entertaining first four minutes and nine seconds. The extra point good. 7-7 seven, seven here. Let's get you an update. Back to the studio we go. We say good morning from Minneapolis to Cassidy Hummel. I had no issue with them being number one. Penn State number five in the AP poll and the coaches poll, but ranked by the committee number four ahead of Clemson. And as we mentioned, the Gophers number 13 in the AP poll, but number 17 in the eyes of the committee. They say they're really not focused on that. There's a lot of football still to be played. Demetrius Douglas had trouble with the Jordan Stout kickoff. He winds up returning it only to the 13 for coach P.J. Fleck, who has led this program to a number of firsts, including the 8-0 start. First time since the days of coach Bernie Beerman. 5-0. In the Big Ten since 1961, the first time. And you have to go back to 1961, the last time they hosted a game between two teams in the top 15. And we said, settle in for an historic day when we greeted you at the top of the telecast. First time in the history of the AP poll. That area dates back to 1936. Two games of eight, no teams are better on the same day. Bama and LSU later, wide open. It's the touchdown score, Rashad Bateman dropped at the 41-yard line, but a big gainer to start this possession, 28 yards for Minnesota. He actually had both receivers open. He had Johnson open deep. He passed on him and went underneath the Bateman. That play action off their run fake, off the stretch play, has been dynamite for Minnesota here over the last four or five ball games. We should note Micah Parsons is on the field. Disciplined, as Holly told you, for behavioral modification. Their leading tackler, emerging as one of the best linebackers in the country, semifinalist for the Buckus Award as the best linebacker in the country as a sophomore. Straight ahead goes Shannon Brooks, and that's a gain of two for the fifth year senior from Georgia, Jan Johnson, the middle linebacker. Leads the defense for Penn State, made the tackle. Jan Johnson, kind of the glue of that defense. Real active linebackers with Cam Brown and Micah Parsons on the outside, but he's the quarterback of that defense right in the middle. Very physical guy. Nice tackle at the point of attack there. Very smart. He's already earned two degrees at Penn State, and he's working on a third. Play fake to Shannon Brooks, another. Bullet right on target from Tanner Morgan to Tyler Johnson. The hometown product from Minneapolis North High School takes them to the 39-yard line of Penn State. Well, Penn State tried to bring their safety, Lamont Wade, up into the run box, and that left a hole behind him. 
And Tyler Johnson ran right into that void, and Tanner Morgan found him with the football. 32 straight games with a reception. That's 171 career catches now. Tied with 2-2 Atwell for third in Minnesota history. On first and ten, straight ahead, Shannon Brooks and Robert Windsor made the tackle, having an outstanding year in the middle of that defensive line. You know, we talked about after the bye week and the change in this Minnesota offense in their running game. The other thing to keep in mind, they have three running backs that are all really powerfully and good runners that are all healthy now, which they've all battled injuries at different times in their career. And now they're all healthy, and that's made a big difference for this Gopher offense, too. Smith, Ibrahim, and Brooks, 7,503 combined rush yards. That's the most of any running back trio in the country. Deep and talented at a lot of places. Mohamed Ibrahim tackled at the 33-yard line by Windsor, Jan Johnson, and Garrett Taylor. I think if you're a doubter of this Minnesota team, you run the risk of having your opinion changed. Well, they're off to about as good a start as you could make in terms of making a right impression. I mean, they look the part. They're a physical, well-coached, disciplined team. You can understand the doubts. This is the first ranked opponent they've played this season. Right. The eight teams they've defeated have a combined winning percentage of 42%. That is second lowest among any Power 5 team. Only Missouri, by that standard, has played a weaker schedule. Ibrahim, his specialty, is short yardage and he did not get the first down they have not kicked field goals very well so on fourth and one they're going to send their wildcat quarterback into the game seth green they don't necessarily put him in the wildcat when he's on the field but more often than not they do and he's good at it well they are this time because tanner morgan's down here as a wide receiver they've used this quite a bit this is the real quarterback tanner morgan here so Seth Green, big guy in there at the Wildcat. 6'4", 240, was a tight end. He keeps it, lowers his head, and has the first down to the 28-yard line. Excellent block by the tight end, Brevin Span, four, number 88, coming across. And then Ibrahim with the lead block, and they do a combination. They'll let the quarterback run and lead block with the back. They'll let the back run and lead back, lead block with the quarterback. That time, Seth Green gets the first down with power. Scored two touchdowns for Coach Fleck in their last game two weeks ago against Maryland. Each of these teams coming off a of bye week. They're well rested, had a chance to get some people healthy. Rodney Smith back in, and he gets stacked up. We're no game tonight on ABC in the ESPN app, 7.30 Eastern Time. Saturday Night Football presented by Bass Pro Shop and Cabela's. Number five, Clemson at NC State. Interesting to hear Kirk Herbstreit talking this morning about how this talented Clemson team, particularly Dabo Sweeney, not very happy now that they our number five, not in playoff position right now, but most people think they're going to win out and be one of the four teams. I think they have the, the clearest path to the playoff. I'll be shocked if they're not one of the four teams in there when it's all said and done. Rodney Smith outside. He goes. Well, we talked up about four yards short of the first down. We talked about the stretch play, and that's been their second pitch. They've always been good at the inside zone. That has become their new second favorite play, and they got an excellent block that time by Blaze Andrews, the left guard against Micah Parson. Penn State wants to get penetration when they see that play. They want to get across the line of scrimmage. Parsons did, but he got picked up by the secondary block. Gophers went to that outside zone or stretch play because they want to see the defensive lineman running laterally, not penetrated. Short throw, little bubble, Chris Ottman Bell inside the 10, the 5, touchdown Minnesota! As long as that play and the ball is thrown behind the line of scrimmage, 
linemen can get downfield the block. This is perfect execution by Minnesota. Ball's caught behind the line of scrimmage. Linemen are downfield. And then Chris Altman Bell, who <laughs> Coach Chiraca told us he knows he's number three as a receiver, but he wants to be number one, and all he does is make big plays. That's a number one kind of play right there by Altman Bell. Huge catch in their win against Fresno State early in the year on a fourth down. Brock Walker kicks the extra point. And back and forth they go early. Chris Offen Bell from Kankakee, Illinois, with his fifth touchdown of his redshirt sophomore season. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, introducing the newest honorary member of the College Football Hall of Fame, the Goodyear Blimp. Goodyear, more driven. Beautiful day here in Minnesota. 43 degrees, mostly sunny skies now after a cloudy morning. Very little wind it is warmed up. It wasn't anywhere near this warm yesterday when these Gophers had their walk through on the TCF Bank Stadium Field. 16 degrees. Thursday night, KJ Handler brings back the Grant Wiersey kickoff, and he's down at the 21 yard line. Time now for the Athlac trivia question. Golfers are 8 0. The last time they started 9 0 was in 1904. There were five states that weren't a part of the union yet. Can you uh, name those five states? So we're doing Super American football. history and college football history in, in one question. College football, so we're emphasizing education today. Back in 1904, by the way, they uh, opened the season. They played some high school teams. They opened the season with Twin Cities Central High School on their way to 9 0. Bill Lamagna, a rules expert, refereed that game. Penn State will not be charged with timeout. We reset the play clock. It's first and 10. No timeout for Penn State. So still first and ten, no timeout. Journey Brown, another long journey for Brown across midfield in the Gopher territory and banged out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Uh, another long run for Brown. This one's 35 yards. Well, watch the clock in the center right here. Michael Mendez is going to do a nice job just kind of getting the middle linebacker tied in there. And then Journey Brown with some nifty running, quick feet in the hole, breaks it outside, and we've already seen that ability to turn a short run into a long game. He scored their touchdown on a 45-yard gallop. Clifford down the middle, an open receiver, and he wow. short hopped Pat Fryermuth. Yeah, Fryermuth had to stop for the ball. If that ball's thrown deeper, he walks into the end zone. Good design on the play call. He's splitting the defense, and there's nobody behind him. If that ball's thrown two yards deeper, it's open for a touchdown. He had to kind of pull that hand back. You see, he hit his hand on a, I think it was his own offensive lineman, and that's why that ball was short. Now you wonder if that right hand or right thumb is okay on this play. Just one for five to start the game while Tanner Morgan's five for five. That one behind Handler, but he caught it. And he's down inside the 20. They'll spot it at the 17. And Penn State trying to answer once again, 23 on that play. This RPO, the offensive line is blocking run. It's a good play fake. That brings the linebackers up, and you run those slants behind it. Nice connection to Handler. Clifford steps toward the line. It's off the hands of Hamler with Jordan Howden in coverage. Former walk-on here at Minnesota, Jordan Howard out of Las Vegas. Now this is the part of the field where Friar Muth really becomes a coveted receiver. Big, good hands. Here he is right here, kind of in a bunch formation. You got two tight ends and Hamler to the same side of the formation. 
He caught three touchdown passes in their last game two weeks ago against Michigan State. The fake to Brown. Clifford straddling the line of scrimmage. Hoping for a block from Hamler. He gets chased out by Braylon Oliver, redshirt freshman from Douglasville, Georgia. Short of the first down by a couple of yards. Yeah, you see the creativity, though, by Sean Clifford. Nobody was there. He has become a really outstanding runner in this offense. Some by design, but most of the time just when he improvises. Quarterback run very much in play here on third and short on the 10 yard line. And Hamler and Fryer move on the same side. Here they are right there. Before the ball was snapped, delay a game. Offense. Wow. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. They were up around the line for a long time looking to the sideline. It wasn't like they had to race to the line of scrimmage. They just took too long once they got there. And I think you saw James Franklin when he covered up that microphone. I think he was letting Ricky Ronnie know upstairs, we can't afford that. We've got to speed up. That's a costly penalty on third down. The sellout crowd making it difficult. Clifford throws incomplete. Trying to get it to Fryer Muth again. And the field goal unit will come on for the Nittany Lions. Jake Pinnegar will try to make it 14 to 10. That time Boye Mafe was in the pressure on the quarterback and forced that Aaron throw by Sean Clifford. But that penalty, third and three to third and eight, was huge against Penn State. Jake Pinnegar. Oh, well, snap and hold are good. And the kick is right down the middle to the All-State net. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Great scene, the crowd alive. First home sellout here in Minneapolis for the Gophers since 2015. 26 home games since their last sellout. Their team trying to prove a point. Their fans fervently believe that this is one of the best teams in college football, and they look like it. So far today, Jordan Stout's kickoff would be a touchback. Well, it's time to answer the Aflac trivia question. I knew one for sure. Five states that weren't in the Union the last time Minnesota was 9-0 in 1904. Hawaii, right? Right, right. right. That, that, one, that one's got to be a, a given, yeah. And uh, Arizona is definitely one of them as well. You should have known that. I do. I did know that. Okay, you knew that. And I also knew Alaska, New Mexico, and Oklahoma. I, as usual, it's just too bashful to speak up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A little history lesson, courtesy of Aflac. Our creative friends in the truck, led by our producer Phil Dean, our director Scott Johnson. Here's Rodney Smith. He gets nine. Well, Minnesota was a powerhouse in 1904. They won their third national championship that year, but. What do you think the college football playoff committee would have thought about the win over Twin City Central yeah. High School? <laughs> Only Nebraska scored on them the entire year. year. They beat the Huskers 16 to 12. Smith looks like he has enough for the first down just across the 35. You know, one thing about this Minnesota run game, we've talked about the big offensive line, we've talked about the healthy running backs, the trio. The other thing about this offense, their tight ends are outstanding blockers, and we'll see a bunch of different ones. Co-Keefe, number 42, is the starter. Jake Paulson, who hasn't played for a couple weeks, number 80, also an outstanding blocker. This formation, they don't have one in, but when they run the football, those tight ends are a critical part of the, of the action. Third possession for Minnesota. They've scored touchdowns on the previous two. Tyler Johnson weaves across the 40. Quan Brisker made the tackle. Bear in mind that the Gophers are doing this against a Penn State team that was second in the country in scoring defense coming in. They've given up 9.6 points per game on their way to 8-0. Only Ohio State better. They hadn't given up a touchdown all year in the first quarter. They've given up two to the Gophers today. And I think they knew that this was going to be a tough matchup with these wide receivers. Now their pass rush for the most part this year has bailed them out. But so far not able to get to the quarterback. Muhammad Ibrahim. 
closer to the line to make, but didn't get there. Minimal gain. It'll be third down and three, and the Gophers don't need to snap it again. Brent Pry, the defensive coordinator for Penn State, the one of the best units in the country, but tested today. Most points they've given up in a game this year is 21 to Michigan. This is part of that clock. I mean, they're one of the few teams still in college football that believes in the power of time of possession. It's an important part of P.J. Flex's plan here at Minnesota. Learned to manage the clock from Jim Tressel when he was a graduate assistant at Ohio State. They're fired up in Minneapolis. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return after this message in order from our ABC stations. We're one Minnesota. And when you're starting to see how this whole thing can really work in this whole Twin Cities area, that's what we're talking about. But our fans were unbelievable today. That's the best college football environment I've ever played in as a head football coach. So let me go deep to Bateman. He's up there. Got it. Down the sideline. Let it go. 30, 20, 10. The place has gone nuclear. Touchdown. Let's go. Lots of offense in the first quarter. Minnesota leads 14 to 10. The Gophers had 199 yards of offense in the first 15 minutes and as the second quarter begins Tanner Morgan and Minnesota looking at third down a long three a short four whatever you want to characterize it. Penn State showing man coverage press man Morgan pulls it down takes off running slides down at the 49 yard line with a Minnesota first down whenever there's man coverage that's going to open up running lanes for the quarterback when you see linebackers take off in coverage that opens things up and Tanner Morgan reads it and he finds open grass and gets the first down on third and four good block by John Michael Schmitz who's come in at center for Connor Olson he's not a starter but PJ Fleck calls him their sixth starter they rotate him into the game move positions yeah Olson's at left guard he's Gives them versatility playing center and guard. Blaze Andrews, the starting left guard, typically can play more guard and tackle. So they've got a lot of flexibility in what they do with this offensive line. Muhammad Ibrahim, the ball carrier. He got them across midfield. Very methodical. This is, you know, James Franklin said we don't want to let them get the game developed the way they want. Well, this is the way Minnesota wants the game to be right now. Here's Shannon Brooks trying to turn the corner and did not. Stopped at the line of scrimmage by Garrett Taylor, 50-year senior safety out of Richmond, Virginia. That was beautiful play by Jason Oway, the defensive end, though. Jason Oway had contained on that play. He read the stretch play. He kept his outside arm free and turned that play back inside. And that's why the play was stopped for a very short game. Here's another third down for Minnesota. They're two out of three on third down. Converted on a fourth down with the Wildcat. Gross Matos right here is over the center. He's usually on the outside. Tough pot to be there in the middle. Morgan given time, throws near sideline, incomplete. Intended for Chris Ottman Bell. Tariq Castro Fields won the battle of hyphenated last names. It was a good read. That was where the single coverage was, but it was excellent coverage by Castro Fields downfield to knock the ball away. Miss in the game for Morgan. Mm -hmm. Six out of seven. AJ Hamler, dangerous punt returner, back for the punt from Jacob Herbers. Punted only one time in their last game Timeout. against Maryland. Penn State. This is their first of the half. This is the full And it comes with Minnesota leading 14 to 10. The national championship trophy presented by Dr. Prepper on hand here at TCF Bank Stadium in Minneapolis for this big Big Ten battle. 
with national championship implication. Both of these teams' visions of hoisting that trophy in New Orleans in January. Penn State called timeout. They had 12 men on the field. Save a penalty. Punts it almost straight up in the air. It takes a great bounce. Landed near the 20. Wow. <laughs> and is going to stop at the six yard line. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, Penn State with a missed opportunity on their last offensive possession in the red zone. Sean Clifford was chased out of bounds. James Franklin sprinted 20 yards downfield, got in his quarterback's ear and said, you've got to go faster. Clifford did not, and a result, a delay of game penalty really stalled that drive, and they were forced to settle for a field goal. After all of that, Clifford came over to the sideline, had a long conversation with Franklin. He has got to be more efficient pre-snap, getting them going quicker on offense. You know, Holly, when you're playing on the road, Everything slows down. Your communication, that whole process, you have to speed things up as the quarterback. Journey Brown's had a big first half. Run to 45 for a touchdown. Another run of 35. He settles for about five on that play, driven back by Jamal Teague and Antoine Winfield. You see so many offenses that try to change things at the line of scrimmage. Call the game there. Much easier to do at home than it is on the road. We'll pick up the tempo here, get to the line quickly, snap it quickly, and Brown, a redshirt sophomore from Meadville, Pennsylvania, stopped short of the line to make. These fans are into it. They were encouraged to wear maroon. They responded to that, and they're waving their gold rally towels. <laughs> Feels like I'm in Pittsburgh. <laughs> On third and three, they fake the run. It's on target to Fryermuth for a first down. Chopped down by Antoine Winfield at the 27, 13 yards on third down. See, this play fake is just going to hold these linebackers enough to get Fryermuth behind him. You got to respect the play fake. It opens up right behind him, and this time Clifford on target. Clifford take the handoff, take that he might run, finally through to Handler. He's knocked out of bounds on the Penn State sideline, far side. They'll spot it at the 32-yard line, a gain of five. Tony Durer made the tackle. Very solid. Cornerback number 16. Clifford, design quarterback run. Dropped after a yard. It was Carter Coughlin again. You know, Minnesota is playing without one of their best defensive players. Kamal Martin is one of their top tacklers, tied for the lead. He's only played five games battling some injuries, and they miss him. He's a real difference maker on their defense. Hasn't been in the ball game so far today. I thought he might be able to go. We visited with the coaches yesterday, but it doesn't look like he will. Then they go to the four defensive end package. More speed along the defensive line, anticipating pass on third and four. Clifford shows his own speed, ran away from the speedy D line, got the first down out to the 43-yard line. Mariano Sori Merritt, who's the stand-in for Kamal Martin, made the tackle. Watch, when this linebacker blitzes here, Clifford's going to read it, get right inside, find green grass, and he's done this all season. Again, he's played with a maturity beyond his years, and those are just good, fast decisions by the young quarterback. That one a 10-yard game, 10 minutes to go in the half. Long throw, Hamler in a crowd, runs under it. Winfield got there a fraction too late for Minnesota. And Penn State in business at the Gopher 40 after a 17-yard play. Passer. Defense number 12, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And they'll tack 15 onto the end on the personal foul called against Tayon Devers. Yeah, well, this is a clear call. The ball is going to be released. It's gone. And a clear late hit. And then at the end of the play, Winfield just kind of misjudged the ball. Hamler is not a big guy, but he was able to keep him away with his body and make the catch because that ball was in the air a long time. And Winfield was not able to make a good play on the ball thanks to the positioning of Hamler. 
First penalty against the Gophers, 33rd of the year. Only Wake Forest has been assessed fewer penalties across the country this season. It's a very disciplined Minnesota team. Journey Brown dumped by Micah Du Treadway. A transfer from Notre Dame. Big body guy who did not get on the field a lot at Notre Dame. He's been a good addition to this defensive front here in Minnesota. Shifting in the middle of that front and standing up. Drew Treadway's number 18. This looks very confusing right now for Penn State. Play clock still with seven seconds. Shepard a couple of peaks to the sideline. Snaps it with two. Sends it out wide for Journey Brown. Incomplete. It'll be third down and nine. They just looked a little discombobulated on where they wanted their personnel on that play. They shifted two or three times, snapped the football, then they had the air and throw, and now it's third down and, and nine in Minnesota territory. Ricky Slade in it running back. They blitz and ran him over, but the ball got off, and it's intercepted again by Antoine Winfield. And he brings it back to the 39-yard line. There was pressure on the quarterback, and this ball was a little bit underthrown. He thought he had single coverage on Hamler. Watch Sean Clifford. He's going to get hit a little bit as he throws. The ball's underthrown. Field comes from his free safety position and makes the interception. His second of the game. It's part of Veterans Week presented by USAA. 14 to 10 Minnesota. They have the ball back after the second interception of the game from Antoine Winfield. From their own 39, Tanner Morgan on target again. Rashad Bateman. Inside the Nittany Lion, 40 to the 39-yard line. Again, there's the play action with the slam. But going back to the interception, Mariano Sori Marin is right here. He's the guy playing in place of Kamal Martin. Watch him run over the running back, Ricky Slade. He creates the pressure. Then on the back end, this could have been a defensive pass interference on Chris Williamson. It was not called. And Winfield able to come up with his second interception. So a big break there for Minnesota, and now they've capitalized on the first down play. Tanner Morgan so impressive at quarterback. Seven out of eight for 175 and two touchdowns. That is not his best performance of the season to date, as earlier this year against Purdue. He had a game when he completed 21 out of 22 for 396 yards and four yeah. touchdowns. One of the best performances that you'll ever see in college football by a quarterback. Yeah, Purdue was really intent on stopping the Minnesota run. They only ran for 93 yards, but Tanner Morgan made him pay in the passing game in a huge way. The completion percentage of 95.5 against the Boilermakers, the best in Big Ten history. Among those who threw a minimum of 15 passes in a game, trying to thread it in, and he does! Tyler Johnson! Touchdown, Minnesota! A one-handed grab by the great Tyler Johnson. And Minnesota on fire on offense here in the first half. Set up again by the Winfield interception. One on one coverage against the freshman Keaton Ellis. A perfect throw and a big time catch by a big time receiver, Tyler Johnson. Here's Brock Walker. Red shirt freshman kicker who had attempted only one point after all season prior to today. He's won the kicking battle at least for the time being. P.J. Fleck fired up and justifiably so. 
Perfect throw over the outside. You just see the strength, the big body of Tyler Johnson fights off the freshman, Keaton Ellis, and another touchdown for the Golden Gophers. They capitalize on the turnover, a pass to Bateman, and now a touchdown pass to Tyler Johnson. Minnesota looking as strong as they look to us on film. Yeah, I don't think you and I are surprised that they look good. Yeah. They look really good on tape. You can say, well, they didn't play anybody, but all you can do is beat the people that That's you've right. been playing. In the last four games they played, they've been hammering people. And when you watch the film, the talent jumps up. I mean, Johnson and Bateman, that's one of the best wide receiver duos in the country. Whitfield's already shown he's one of the best defensive backs in the country. They have a mammoth and good offensive line. They have three accomplished running backs and a quarterback who does a great job of running the show. Absolutely. <laughs> They have a good plan coming into this game off the bye week that is causing a lot of problems for Brent Pry's defense so far. And Ryerson, very short kickoff. K.J. Handler trying to get outside, and he's chased out of bounds. There's a flag down back at the 23-yard line. He went out at the 33. During the return, illegal block in the back. Return team number seven. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Penn State. Guys, Antoine Winfield Jr. having a fantastic game with two picks that they've turned into points, and he has a good reason for being good in that backfield. He had one of the world's best mentors, his own father, Antoine Winfield, won the Thorpe Award while he was at Ohio State, went on to have a great NFL career where he was a three-time pro bowler. He said, my dad has taught me all the little intricacies of this craft. And guys, he knew exactly how many interceptions he needed to take over number one in the country. He is now tied for first with seven. He told me yesterday he was going to do it today. And boy, he actually has. <laughs> Pathetic. Tied with Douglas Coleman of Texas Tech for the National League. Seven interceptions. Ricky Slade chopped down behind the line of scrimmage by Carter Coughlin and Coney Durr. And by the way, the seven interceptions for the season ties the Minnesota single season record with Jeff Wright in 1970, the most recent to have seven, and the only other, Harold Van Every, back in 1939. And a lot of season left for Winfield to have that record all by himself. Lots of time for Sean Clifford. Throws deep for Handler. And good coverage by Jordan Howden, who was right on his hip. Excellent coverage by Howden. And that time you saw just, just a little glimpse of panic in Sean Clifford. He didn't have anything. He just took a shot down the field for Handler. But that was excellent coverage. And now it's third and long, deep in his own territory for Sean Clifford. Again, Friar Muth. Very much an option at this point in the field. Unfamiliar territory for Penn State. They have trailed infrequently on their way to 8-0. Clifford, a nice pocket, and a throw that's dropped off the hands of Daniel George. You said it earlier, Todd, they're looking for other wide receivers to make plays beyond Ambler, and they're really not getting much from the other guys. No, not so far. And, I mean, Dodson has not had a ball thrown to him. This is the first one to shorter. That's a catchable ball. It's a good throw by Sean Clifford, and you've got to have other guys step up. Daniel George is not able to make the play. Blake Gillikin, the punter. Caught by Demetrius Douglas, and he's ripped down immediately. Excellent putt, 43 yards, and well covered by Dan Ch This season, Taco Bell celebrating student sections, passionate fans like these Minnesota Golden Gophers. They're awarding the Lift Moss student section of the year. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell. See how your school can compete and get the committee's attention by using hashtag Lift Moss student section contest. This student sections have plenty of help being vocal from the Gopher Partisans here at TCF Bank Stadium. Minnesota leading by 11. They go to the flea flicker. Tanner Morgan has a man wide open. Tyler Johnson, the ball's out, and it goes out of bounds. And it'll be Minnesota ball. Big break for the Gophers. It'll go into the books as a 27-yard game.
Well, you're going to see eyes on the backfield. That is what holds the defense. And the freshman linebacker, Brandon Smith, number 12, not able to get out there in time to make a play. Good hit on the football by Marquise Wilson, the freshman quarterback. But it's kicked out of bounds and Minnesota first down. There's Shannon Brooks. Down near the 10-yard line. Tackled by Lamont Wade after Micah Parsons missed close to the line of scrimmage. This is the stretch play. You get everything moving this way. Now watch the right guard get enough of a block on Parsons as he tries to come across the line of scrimmage. One block, the back has the opportunity to cut it up anywhere inside, and they get another first down deep in Penn State, ter Penn State territory. And they couldn't get that play to work early in the season. As a result, they couldn't run the football. Kurt Shiraka, the offensive staff, stuck with it. He credits the offensive line coach, Brian Callahan. And boy, are they making hay with the outside zone and the stretch plays, they call it. Micah Parsons tackled Shannon Brooks. There's Kirk Sharaka. So they went back and studied Washington Redskins film from yep. when Mike Shanahan was the head coach there. Well, they felt like they really needed another run, a second pitch. They loved their inside zone, and they were using the play action passes off the outside zone, but they needed to get better at running it. And uh, credit to them for sticking with it, even though last year when they put it in, it was pretty much bad the whole year. Penn State said we're not going to run laterally against that play along the line. We're going to try to penetrate and blow it up. And it hasn't worked all that often. Morgan was under some duress. Got it to Brevin Span Ford. Just his third catch of the season and only the seventh for Minnesota tight end. Really nice play by Jan Johnson that time. And that was kind of a play where you try to fool them. You don't throw to the tight ends much. It's a throwback play. Jan Johnson was not fooled. Very smart defender in the middle of that defense. Is there to snuff it out. One of the team leaders, fifth year senior Jan Johnson, a team captain. Degree in psychology, a master's in management and organizational leadership, and now getting a third degree in health policy. A fade and over the head of Tyler Johnson. They had exactly what they wanted, Sean. They had Tyler Johnson going on Lamont Wade, who's a five foot nine safety. He's had an excellent season, especially the last four games. But that matchup favored Tyler Johnson and just an overthrow by Tanner Morgan. So here's Brock Walker, who has emerged as their new kicker. Redshirt freshman from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. This is his first career collegiate field goal attempt. I think his heart is racing a little bit. National TV, sellout crowd. One of the big games in program history. No problem. Good from 26 and a 14-point lead for the Golden Gophers. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, recognizing those who strive to rise above the rest. Goodyear, more driven. Very close to the banks of the Mississippi River. You saw the great city of Minneapolis, not far off in the distance. They are fired up for Gopher football. They're getting more excited by the moment. As Minnesota has a 24 to 10 lead over the number four team in the country, Penn State, KJ Hamler. Back for the kickoff. Row the boat is the mantra. KJ Hamler tries the near side and gets chased out of the 26. Tanner Morgan has been brilliant so far in the first half. 10 of 12, 243 touchdowns. But he's going to wish he had this one back because as he gets the fade route, if he puts that ball right there, it's another touchdown, his fourth of the game. He's got single coverage, his favorite receiver. The ball just sails a little bit wide instead of that back pylon, or else they'd have an even bigger lead than they have right now. But he has been outstanding so far in the first half. He works with a kinesiologist who's based in Toronto, and that's the reason why he does those hip snaps on the sideline over there. He said his teammates make fun of him.
Journey Brown, the ball carrier, Keontae Shad made the tackle. But Tanner told us yesterday, my hips are the most important part of my throwing motion. My hips need to lead my arm, so I'm trying to keep my lips, uh, hips, maybe his lips too, <laughs> loose on the sideline. That's, that's your job, keeping your lips loose. <laughs> They'll do the hips. Usually not a problem. <laughs> John Clifford just six out of 16 fakes it to Journey Brown on target there KJ Hamler tackled by Benjamin St. Just or that might have been a touchdown well, this Minnesota was thinking run all the way the fake really held him good fake to Journey Brown and then you get Hamler your big play receiver and if it wasn't for the shoestring tackle of St. Just that's a touchdown for Penn State one of the many things that they do so well here at Minnesota, Journey Brown, the ball carrier, gain of a couple. They tackle very well. The safeties in particular, St. Winfield make a couple of stops where he didn't make them that might have been off to the races. And just another one of those grad transfers on this Minnesota defense came over from Michigan, has three years of eligibility, graduated in two years, and he's tall. He's six foot three, matches up on big receivers. Joe Rossi, the defensive coordinator, said St. Juice to play in the NFL, and he had a hard time getting on the field in Michigan. Carter Coughlin with the sack. Well, this is just an effort play by Coughlin. Here he is right here. He's working on Will Fries, the right tackle, and he's got to go all the way around the play. Fries does a decent job taking him around the quarterback, but then he's still able to get enough of Sean Clifford to get him to the ground. There's Joe Rossi, the defensive coordinator, leaning forward and making some notes. Pittsburgh guy, went to Pittsburgh Central Catholic. Dan Marino, among others, out of Pittsburgh Central Catholic. Great football history there. Sean Clifford got spun around and walloped at the 41-yard line. Coney Durr, the primary hit. He's four yards short of a first down. James, James Franklin looks like he's going to go for it. Yeah, he's signaling go for it. Fourth and four, under a minute to go in the half. Minnesota calls timeout. This is their second of the half. This is a 30-second timeout. And we'll be back in 30 seconds. away from the Capital One halftime report with Kevin McGondy, Jonathan Bilmer, and Mark Sanchez. 24-10 Minnesota, huge fourth down and four for Penn State at the Gopher 41. And here's your two guys right here, Hamler and Firemute on the same side. And it looks like Minnesota's going to call another timeout. Timeout, Minnesota. This is their third and final charge timeout. This is their third and timeout. Doesn't like to take the timeouts with him. We watched the tape of their game two weeks ago, which was their last game against Maryland. And he used all the first half timeouts in the first quarter, and he used all the second half timeouts in the third quarter. He says his job is, during the game, to manage the game, particularly the management of the clock. But he has, I think, demonstrated he is a great manager of programs, both at Western Michigan and here at Minnesota. Yeah, and you know what? A lot of people wonder, is it hype? Is it for real? Is it genuine? And until you meet the guy, you don't know. And after we spent some time with him yesterday, I'm a believer. I think he's for real. I think he's genuine. And I think his players believe he's genuine. And that's the most important thing. And I completely agree. Hadn't met him until yesterday. The fraud antenna was up, and it was extinguished quickly by Coach Flint. Ultra impressive. I think he wanted to call that timeout. This is a huge play. If they get a stop here, they're going to get the ball to start the third quarter. Huge momentum play right here. Clifford throws and a catch in traffic by Matt Fryermuth. Clearly one of the best tight ends in the country. Nine yards and a first down at the Minnesota 32. Watch him just stick that right foot in the ground. Just got enough separation from Chris Williamson with that little step to get open for the play. 40 seconds, clock running. Two timeouts for the Nittany Lions. Clifford one-on-one -on -one with Fryer Muth. Well covered by Antoine Winfield. A matchup of two of the best players in the country at their position. The thing about Winfield that makes him special, he's solid against the run. 
He can cover and he can play the middle of the field as a safety and he's got excellent ball skills as we've already seen. Now he's got the bloodlines and he's had the mentor and the coach, but uh, he's got the genes too. He's got ball skills that are unique. Spent much of his youth here in the Twin Cities going to Vikings games while his dad starred for Minnesota's NFL entry. Sean Clifford trying to weave his way through some traffic, including the umpire. He's down at the 27. James Franklin races onto the field to call a timeout. That was a designed quarterback run. Journey Brown was the lead blocker, and the umpire was the, the second blocker on the play. Brad Hudak tried to get out of the way. Kick off your Week 10 NFL Sunday with ESPN and the ESPN app. 10 a.m. Eastern. They'll have all the early breaking stories, previews of each game, right up until the kickoff. And then cap off Week 10 of NFL's 50th season of Monday Night Football again on ESPN. ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app. The undefeated San Francisco 49ers hosting the Seattle Seahawks. 8 Eastern time, Monday Night Countdown. At 6 Eastern, San Francisco, the only remaining undefeated team in the NFL. I think the guy that Penn State's got to get involved here is Jahan Dotson. He's down here at the bottom, number five. He's an explosive type receiver, has had a quiet first half so far. Third down, five, three man rush. Clifford. Throws Pryor Muth upended at the eight yard line. Winfield there again. 20 yard play. First and goal. One timeout left. Clock stopped to move the chains. It looks like they're ready to snap it and spike it. What a play by Clifford John. I mean, he was scrambling, kept his eyes downfield, and because he was moving behind the line of scrimmage, the defense is going to open up and give him a throw to Pryor Muth. That's a hard throw, moving to his left, back to the middle, on target to his big tight end to extend this drive. Firemuth is a force. They lined up as if Journey Brown would be a Wildcat. They shift Clifford back to the quarterback spot. He tried to rip it in to Nick Bowers, another tight end, and it was off target. It's third down and goal with 14 seconds and a timeout left. It was kind of a trick play. It was an unbalanced line, and so Bowers was lined up as the tackle position, but Minnesota was not full. Thomas Barber almost came away with the interception. Third and goal. Clifford looked like a design run. He's chopped down at the three. Clock still ticking. They'll let it go down, call the timeout, and either kick a field goal or take one more shot at the end zone. The third and final charge timeout. I know you're down 14 on the road, but I think you got to take points here, don't you? Minnesota's going to get the ball to start the third quarter. I think you got to take points, cut into the lead, and, and go in and, and figure out what's wrong with your plan for the second half, particularly defensively. If you go for it here and don't make it, Minnesota goes into the locker room with tremendous momentum, and they get the ball to start the third quarter. I agree with you. A lot of football to be played. You have an offense that's capable of being yes. explosive. Take the points. Here comes Jake Penninger. Blake Gilligan, the punter, is the holder. If you had a fake you liked. That might be within the realm of possibility. This is essentially an extra point for Penninger. 21 yard field goal from almost dead center. There's a flag down. And he ran into the kicker. Benjamin St. Juiced. Now what do you do? No time left. The field goal was good. They're looking to the sideline. They could take half the distance. Running into the kicker on the defense. That penalty is declined. The field goal is good. 
That's the end of the first half. That applies the same logic we were just right. talking about. If you're going to take the points, take the points. They got the points. Here's Holly Rowe. Coach Fleck, everywhere in your program, it says. It's halftime and time for music from your University of Minnesota Marching Band. Today, the pride of Minnesota pays tribute to all those who have served or are serving in the United States military or as first responders. We thank these selfless individuals and their families for their service and contributions to our nation. We begin in 1941 with a song made famous by the mound Minnesota singing sensation the Andrews Sisters and became an iconic World War II hit. Here is Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy. Our next election, we turn to the March King, John Philip Sousa, and the march he wrote in 1888 at the request of President Chester A. Arthur. It has since become the official march of the United States Marine Corps. This is Semper Fidelis. The pride of Minnesota now honors all those who have proudly served our country, both at home and abroad. We invite all who have served or are serving and their family members to stand and be recognized when you hear the anthem of your military branch as we play the Armed Forces Salute. History had its eyes on Secretary of the Treasury Alexander Hamilton when he requested that President George Washington create the Revenue Marine on August 4, 1790. Today, this branch serves as America's maritime first responder. We salute the United States Coast Guard.
On August 1st, 1907, only three and a half years after the Wright brothers' first flight, the U.S. Army Signal Corps formed an aeronautical division. This division became its own branch on September 18, 1947, protecting America since the dawn of flight, the United States Air Force! With a recognized birthday of October 13, 1775, the day when the Continental Congress passed a resolution creating the branch, this organization's mission continues to be to deter aggression and maintain freedom of the seas. We honor the United States Navy! The next branch was formed on November 10, 1775 in Philadelphia. And since that time, they have served in every American armed conflict. Always faithful as they fight for right and freedom, we salute the few, the proud, the United States Marine Corps. Established 244 years ago to protect our nation, our final branch was founded on June 14, 1775. The largest and oldest branch of the U.S. military, they have defended our country from Yorktown to the beaches of Normandy. We honor the United States Army! We ask all who have served or are serving to stand one more time. And we also ask all those who are serving our country through their critical work as first responders to join them while we play America's favorite march, the Stars and Stripes Forever! Now, please rise and join Associate Director of Bands, Professor Jerry Lucart, in the singing of our alma mater, Hail Minnesota!
And now, your Minnesota Rousers! Fans, it's time for today's KSTP. The ball is the program. Signs everywhere. How did Antoine Winfield Jr. set the tone with that pick on the opening drive? Well, the ball You're watching ESPN College Football presented by Track Ball, part of Veterans Week on ABC, brought to you by USAA. Row the boat. Catchy slogan. And it really, you <laughs> yeah. know, you think, ah, it's kind of a, I don't know if it's a gimmick. It isn't here. I mean, no. that's what they do. Keep the oar in the water. Keep on rowing no matter how it's going. And it's going very well for them today. And we were impressed when we saw them on film. And we knew that this would be their biggest challenge going against Penn State. But they have not missed a beat. I mean, Tanner Morgan, at quarterback, has been spectacular. 10 of 12, 240 yards. He's going to get the ball to start the third quarter. Penn State has to figure some way to get under his skin and get some pressure on him. Jordan's done kickoff results and a touchback. And here's a look at today's Pacific Life game summary. One of the many stars in that half for Minnesota, Antoine Winfield. Yeah, two interceptions. I mean, he is a ball hawk. He has great ball skills. His dad was a great defensive back in college and the NFL. And uh, he has just really set the tone for this Minnesota defense. They've given up a lot of yards, but the turnovers have kept this lead. And then on offense, Tanner Morgan, as we said, 10 of 12, 240 yards, three touchdowns. And uh, he has been very comfortable and efficient. We talked about the wide receivers in that matchup, and they have shown the part so far. We'll start with Tyler Johnson, the wide receiver, taking the ball around the left side for very little, perhaps a yard. Those 240 yards passing for Tanner Morgan in the first half, the most passing yards allowed by Penn State in a first half of any game since the 2017 Rose Bowl, the end of the 2016 season, when Sam Darnold threw for 263 for USC against the Dittany Lions in that first half. Minnesota with 322 yards of total offense. Bear look now, a little change here. They cover the inside guard in the center. And Rodney Smith runs right through it. Micah Parsons, the tackle a moment ago. Holly with James Franklin. Coach Franklin, what was the greatest area of correction you addressed with your team just now? Well, they did a nice job. They did a lot more unbalanced against our defense than we had seen on film. We got to settle down there. We got to get, get them to third down and then get off the field. They haven't been uncomfortable in offense in the first half. So we got to be better on first and second down. And then offensively, can't turn the ball over. I mean, we've done a great job of that all year long. We've turned the ball over, played right into their hands. Couldn't have played much worse in the first half. We're still in this thing, so we'll play well in the second half. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Morgan forced to pull it down, and now he gets swatted down by Jan Johnson for a loss on the play. Well, the turnover is certainly a key. Penn State committed two. The two interceptions thrown by Sean Clifford, picked off by Antoine Winfield. You think of Minnesota football, the row the boat culture, because it really is a culture. So many aspects of it, but disciplined football at the core of it. One penalty right. 
for the Gophers in the first half. No turnover. And efficient. I mean, they're efficient on both sides of the ball. They're in the right place on defense for the most part. And they've been very efficient with both the run and the pass. That was the first negative yardage play of the ball game for Minnesota right there. Against one of the terrific defensive fronts in the country. Morgan on the run in the open field. Spun away from Lamont Wade. But Shaka Tony got him down well shy of the first down line to make by about seven yards. Now I think that Tanner Morgan, they worked with him. We see Sean Clifford on the sideline. They, they talked to him a lot during the bye week. Hey, Penn State, they collapse the pocket. You've got to speed the clock up. If you don't see your first or second progression early, make something happen. Get out of there. We've seen already two plays him doing that. Kirk Sharaka said we spent a lot of time scheming to give our number one option in each passing play the ability to get open quickly. Help Morgan get rid of it quickly. They go to the run on third and seven. Here's Muhammad Ibrahim, not content to go down. He delivers a blow. Garrett Taylor stuck his face in at the end of it and got knocked back. Watch the block by Curtis Dunlap on Micah Parsons. That's the key block on the play. You got to block that middle linebacker. And they did it. They fooled him with the run on third and seven and got the first down. It was Tariq Castro Fields who got run over. Penn State was best in the country entering today. They were giving up 1.99 yards per rush to their opponents. Minnesota's average five per carry today. That one good for 21. And the sophomore from Baltimore, Ibrahim. Rodney Smith, driven back by Parsons, who missed on that previous play. Yeah. He didn't miss on that one. And he beat Coke for the tight end, who's had a good game blocking on the edge for Minnesota. That time he was beaten to the inside by Parsons for the for the play. And another behind, first two behind the line of scrimmage plays for this Penn State defense that has lived off of those kind of plays. Tackles for loss and sacks all season. A flag thrown by the referee. Yeah, too many too men on the guys. field. Illegal substitution. 12 men on the offense. Five-yard penalty. <laughs> Remains second down. And it's tough to sneak one of these offensive right. linemen off right. as big as they are. Yeah, you might have a chance with a wide receiver, but when it's an offensive lineman, you're, you're not going to get away with that. Sam Schluter tried to here's sneak that, off. Here's that unbalance that James Franklin was talking about. Actually, not to just have Schluter back in the ball game. Five offensive line. Second and 16. Rodney Smith stacked up for no game. Good response here after giving up a couple plays. The Penn State defense with some negative plays. And then the help with the penalty is the first third and long play that Minnesota has been in. They've been able to stay in manageable situations, throw the ball when they want and how they want. This one plays into the hands of the Penn State defense a little bit better. And the 24 points given up. You saw Brent Pry, his defense has been outstanding all year, but the 24 points, the most they've given up in the game this season. And they had yielded that at the half. Michigan scored 21 against the Nittany Lions. Out to Tyler Johnson. Inside the 40, but still 10 yards short of the first down, taken down by Cam Brown. This has got to be too far for a field goal as PJ Fleck thinking about going for it. Still got a lot of yards to gain on fourth down. Too close to punt, too far to kick a field goal. And under his philosophy, well, time of possession is the most important thing. This is not too early for him to start milking the clock. He says, if I think we have the game going our way, and I feel comfortable we can protect the lead. I'm going to slow the place down, or the plays down, the pace down, and that's what he's doing. He might just let this run all the way down and call timeout. It looks like that is what he's going to do. I think you're right. I don't think they can get conservative, though, at this point in the game. Penn State has too much firepower on offense. They have to keep doing what they've been doing. This possession, Penn State just got him behind the chains. Play a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. There's Jacob Herbers, the punter. Done an excellent job. His specialty this year has been 
pinning opponents inside the 20 yard line. 10 of his 27 punts prior to today had been inside the opposing 20. Including five in one game against Purdue. And here it is again. Fair catch made by KJ Hamler near the 10 yard line. Up. So they could knock off fourth ranked Penn State here today. Jump up to 3.8 percent, we're told by the FPI people back at ESPN. Sean Clifford first play from scrimmage of the second half for the Nittany Lions, and his pass went over the head of Daniel George. A little contact there by Durer, but I think the ball was so high on the throw that it wasn't even catchable. Penn State has to find a way to get Jahan Dotson more involved. Up here getting isolated a lot on Benjamin St. Juice. Clifford with pressure in his face and the ball flutters to the turf. Incomplete, it'll be third down and ten. Good power rush on the inside by Sam Renner, number 90. He just pushes his man back into the quarterback's lap. Watch number 90 working on Gonzalez and then gets a hand up and knocks the ball away. He and Coughlin both collapsing the pocket. And Renner came here as a walk-on. Joe Rossi said he went from wondering if he'd ever play a snap to now he's an NFL prospect. As a fifth-year senior from nearby Maple Grove, Minnesota. Minnesota showing pressure here, but I think they'll probably back out and only rush three. That's what they do. Make it completed underneath. And they get close to Clifford. And he is yanked down at the one-yard line. The Seize Otomawa made the tackle for Minnesota. It was a three-man rush. They dropped eight. Clifford couldn't get rid of the ball early. That's why he tried to leave the pocket. He was first forced out of the pocket by Boye Mafe, and then Otomowe, something like that. <laughs> Otomiwa. Otomiwa with the sack. Blake Gilligan, the veteran, out of the bag of the end zone. High, good punt. What a year he's had. Demetrius Douglas from his own 47 bounces off the initial hit. Great punt. Tariq Castro Fields down there had the first hit, got back up and was involved in the tackle. Well, here's their season. They struggled to beat South Dakota State, Fresno State, and Georgia Southern. Seven point went over Purdue. Then look at how the scores changed. They hammered Illinois, Nebraska, and Rutgers in 52 to 10 the last time out against Maryland. But looks on the horizon here for P.J. Fleck. It's such a fascinating season because they were lucky to be 4-0 and then they looked dominant making their way to 8-0. They won their first four games by an average of five points per game. They had to win at Fresno State in double overtime. They had to convert on third down and 29 in the final moments of the game against Georgia Southern from their own six with no timeouts left to march down the field and beat them by three. They've been crushing people since. Shannon Brooks tried the middle unsuccessfully loses the ball as he hit the ground the quarterback Morgan trying to get it back but Penn State has it at the 50 yard line the first takeaway of the game for Brent Price defense I think it was the freshman Keith Ellis who knocks this ball out excellent job by the Penn State defense stringing the play out Lamont Wade, the first guy there, and then Keaton Ellis, number two, is the guy who comes in and knocks the football out. Shaka Tony ends up with it, and Penn State gets their much-needed turnover on defense. Gophers as well. They just turned it over for the first time. They reviewed it. It was clearly a fumble. A great chance right here, I think, for Penn State to take a shot down the field. Hamler on one side, you've got Dotson on the other side. Perfect field position to, to take a shot and see if you can get a big one right here off the turnover. On the 50-yard line, neither team has scored here in the third quarter. Journey Brown almost escaped but couldn't get away from Cody Durr from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Well, what a day he's having. 
Redshirt junior, only 5'9", but Joe Ross said tremendous feet, great in run support and coverage, and we've seen that today. Rossi is the defensive coordinator here at Minnesota. His rush got close to Clifford, but didn't get him down, and wow. that ball is caught by K.J. Handler with Jordan Howden draped all over. It looked like it was going to be an interception because I didn't think Clifford was able to get enough on this throw. It was a little bit underthrown. And what a job by Hamler maintaining his concentration as he's going to the ground for the catch. 16-yard gain. Journey Brown off left guard. Stopped at the 32. And P.J. flex a character, but he has interesting people on the staff, too. We visited with the coordinators yesterday. Talked to Joe Rossi. Joe Rossi's coached a lot of different places. A couple of years ago, he was out of football. He, he was part of the staff that got fired at Rutgers. His wife was just about to give birth. He said, you know what? I'm going to take a year off, help raise my baby. K.J. Handler on the jet sweep action, dumped by Carter Coughlin. So then when he went to uh, get back in, P.J. Fleck offered him a roll here, but it was an off-the-field analyst. And Joe Rossi's, one of his jobs was to drive around campus in a golf cart during the day to make sure the gopher football players were going to their classes. Right. In January. In January. He said, I had a golf cart that had no windshield. He said, one day I'd come in, it was driving rain, about 35 degrees. I did sit for about three minutes and say, what the heck am I doing? They said, stop feeling sorry for yourself, get back to work. Now he's the defensive coordinator doing a tremendous job. Clifford throws. A.J. Hamler again. Steady diet of their best receiver, and it's a first down for Penn State at the 20-yard line. We've seen Clifford do this a couple times. He starts to leave the pocket, and he looks like he's going to run, and you have to respect him as a runner, but he keeps his eyes downfield, and he's able to quickly deliver the ball forward for the first down. Trying to capitalize on the first go for turnover of the day. Clifford down the middle. Off the hands of Justin Shorter. It would have been a touchdown. Well, they wanted to get this guy involved. They thought that Justin Shorter could have a big game today. This is his second drop, and he was also the guy that Winfield went up over and got the interception on. Clifford paid the price, but he put the ball in the right spot, and Shorter just wasn't able to come down with it. Ironically, Shorter is their tallest wide receiver. The Sam Renner who put the hit on Clifford. They try Hamler coming in this direction. And he's yanked down by Jordan Howden after a gain of eight. Third down and two as we approach five minutes remaining in the third quarter. They haven't really said it yet, but this is the area where they miss Noah Kane. Of all their running backs, he's the most powerful runner that they have. He is dressed, but the coaches were hoping not to use him with a lower body injury. They don't give specific injury information at Penn State. This will be put up in front. It's Journey Brown spins and is very close to that line to make along the 10-yard line. Antoine Winfield to tackle. Nice double team in there by the center. Michael Bennett, C.J. Thorpe, the right guard. He gets the first down. First and goal from just inside the 10-yard line. Nose of the football barely across the 10. Briarview territory here. Mm -hmm. Shift right here, 87. Got a bunch set with two tight ends at Hamler. Single on Dotson at the bottom. And it's a touchdown. Great fake by Clifford and Nick Bowers has his first catch of the game. A 10-yard touchdown. Well, he just sneaks it in. You've got Hamler and Fryer Muth there next to him. And here's Bowers. He's going to slip right in here. And Minnesota kind of forgets about him. All the attention on 87 and 1. And a nice play call by Ricky Ronnie and a read by Sean Clifford. Going to go for two here. Try to make it a three-point game with 4.05 to go in the third quarter. Not enough guys here at the bottom. Not enough defenders. They throw it out to Ricky Slade. And even shorthanded on this side, they made the stop. Cody 
Durr there for Minnesota. Unbelievable play by Durr. That was a big tight end blocking on him. The guy who got the touchdown, Bauer, the undersized cornerback, fights off the block and gets the stop on the two-point play. You're watching the Big Ten on ABC. CCF Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, where aerial coverage is provided by Goodyear from end zone to end zone. Goodyear, more driven. Penn State capitalized on the first Minnesota turnover of the day, turned it into six points. And the kickoff by Jordan Stout down by Demetrius Douglas. Here's Cassidy Hubbard. Big shot. Let's take a look at one of AT&T's best performances. Number 10 Florida hosting Vandy Kyle Trask with a career high in passing yards with over 330 so far. Here's his third touchdown pass of the day. Also has one on the ground. The Gators up 35-0 this one over on ESPN. Sean? All right, Cassidy, thank you. Sean, in the first half, Minnesota had 321 yards against Penn State's defense. No negative plays by the Nittany Lions. First two possessions, three negative plays and a turnover. So a much more spirited effort here to start the second half. Morgan, Hawk, Chris Ottman-Bell, quality gain on first down. He got eight. And Morgan delivered that up for S. Got hit right as he was throwing the football, still able to make an accurate throw. And again, when they're second and two, third and three in that area, that is when uh, this offense has been very, very difficult to stop tonight. More TD passes than incompletions for Morgan, the sophomore from Union, Kentucky. He was on his way to Western Michigan to play for P.J. Fleck there. And the P.J. wound up coming here. He invited Morgan to come with him. Rodney Smith, no gain. Micah Parsons, Jan Johnson there, and it's going to be a holding penalty against Minnesota. Holding. Offense number 51, 10-yard penalty. Repeat second out. Yeah, Curtis Dunlap got a little bit surprised by the blitzing Jan Johnson and just instinctively reached out and grabbed him. An easy call in the middle of that formation. And once again now, they were second and really short, and now they're second behind the chains, and so Penn State's defense a chance to get off the field again quickly. And after one penalty in the first half, three already here in the third quarter, and the second least penalized team in the country. Smith remains the running back on second and 12. Morgan faked it to him, and has a man open, caught, first down. 46-yard line, Rashad Bateman for 23. Unbelievable route. We talked about how much they run the slants. Watch him run the slant and then out. And Tariq Castro Fields is completely twisted around. Beautiful route and another nice throw by Tanner Morgan to get the yardage back in the first down. That was pretty. Five catches today, all of them for a first down or a score. 87 career catches in just 22 games here at Minnesota. There's the slant. Come right back to it. Picking on Castro Fields a little bit here in a couple plays. When he came in as a freshman, he was only 170 and a few pounds. He's put on about 25 pounds. They think he can still get bigger, and by the time he leaves here, they think he could be as good as ever's played here at lineup. 13 more for number 13. Trevor Morgan is being pressed. I mean, he has really looked under control and comfortable. Gives it off to Rodney Smith. You can tell when we talked to him yesterday, Smith gets about five. He's very smart, and the coaches all talked about Morgan's work ethic. And he said he's the football equivalent of a basketball gym rat, always in the film room, always asking questions, bringing ideas to the coaches. And they give him a lot of responsibilities. You can see watching today, and he does a nice job of getting him into the right things. Dad, Ted, helped coach him growing up. He faked it to Smith. He got hit. The ball goes straight up in the air, and it 
falls incomplete. Shaka Tony delivered the blow to Tanner Morgan and forced the pop-up throw. Yeah, this was a whiff by the tight end, Jake Paulson. This is supposed to be picked up. Jake Paulson is coming across as the tight end and just whiffs on the play, and that's why the hit was put on Morgan. And Minnesota very lucky that ball was not intercepted. Jaquan Brisker injured. Eligible downfield. Offense number 78. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. This is an official's timeout for an injury. Fa'alele with the being downfield, but you saw the miss block that time by Jake Paulson. And again, this ball was up for grabs, and credit Ottman Bell for at least going up and trying to fight it away to, to prevent the interception. And when Fa'alele is downfield, you're going to see him. <laughs> he is the heaviest or player. Or feel him or hear him or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Or feel the earth move. Good to see Brisker back up now, uh, walking off. There's Fa'alele, 400-pounder. Ridgely from Australia hasn't played football for very long. He did play at IMG Academy, and he does have four X gloves. Yeah, but we're told the only reason he has those is they don't have any bigger. He asked if they had bigger gloves, and they said no. 400 pounds, as we all know, is a lot. A typical adult male lion, as you know, Todd being yeah. a Nittany lion. Weighs 400 pounds. A piano, approximately 400 pounds. <laughs> you put Sean Clifford and KJ Hamler together for Penn State, 392 pounds. A very likable young man, and they think you know, he's just developing as a football player. Very raw still, but talented and athletic to go with that size. Second down and 11, not in field goal range. Here comes Chris Ottman Bell again, and Penn State ready for that this time. Cam Brown right there to drop it for no game. Yeah, really well played by Cam Brown. Maintained leverage, good hustle and rally to the football that time by Penn State on defense and a third and long. And we've just seen a much different Penn State defense here in the third quarter than we saw in that first half. Juan Brisker, who was slow to get up a moment ago, is right back on the field now, the junior from Pittsburgh. Junior college transfer from Lackawanna Community College, first year at Penn State. 30 seconds to go, third quarter. Clearly, they have slowed the pace here with the lead. You wonder if they've cost themselves some rhythm. Morgan says no to that question. On target to Rashawn Bateman inside. The five-yard line and out of bounds at the four. Watch the use of the eyes by Tanner Morgan. He's going to look to his left. That keeps the safety in the middle of the field, and then he throws it to the other sideline to his number one target today, Rashad Bateman. But it was the eyes of Tanner Morgan that opened that up for Bateman. What a day for Bateman. Targeted seven times. He's caught all seven for 203 yards. And a touchdown. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return. Do you know what the U of M does for you? From farms to breweries and orchards to markets, discover how the University of Minnesota is cultivating a new crop of Minnesota businesses. Do you know what the U of M does for you? From hooves to hands and paws to possibilities, discover how the University of Minnesota is making medical advances for all Minnesotans. Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe back in Minneapolis, the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Leading 24 to 19 as we go to the fourth quarter. They have it first and goal at the Penn State four. Seth Green, the Wildcat quarterback, in right now. They've got a lot of different things with him in there. Moving direct, snapping it to the other back in the backfield. They give it to Green. He's submarine. Was he whistled down? Apparently not. They let the play go, and they're going to mark him near the two-yard line. He has not thrown the ball this season. Now, last year he was four of five, a couple of touchdowns. 
but he has not thrown it yet this year. He was a quarterback, moved to tight end, then moved to wide receiver. He's a huge reason why they are the best team in the country in goal-to-go -go situations. 18 for 18 scoring touchdowns. Other teams are perfect, but they don't have as many touchdowns and opportunities as the Gophers had in goal-to-go. Green lowers his head again. Touchdown, Minnesota. Well, I told you these tight ends, how they block for Minnesota. Wow. I want you to watch when we get a chance to show the replay. Code Keith, number 42, his block for Seth Green. Here's Brock Walker to give the Golden Gophers a 12-point lead with 14-11 to go. It is good. Sean Kershiraka told us yesterday that when the tight end is established in our offense, then our offense becomes tough. Watch this block leading the way for Seth Green. Just takes his man into the end zone, and Green follows him for the touchdown. They have so many good players. Green, another one, an excellent role player. They're so well coached. At 38, P.J. Fleck has clearly established himself. He just agreed to a seven-year contract extension earlier this week for an average of $4.75 million. That had been in the works since the summer, but Florida State's interest might have sped up the process. We met yesterday with Kirk Sherrock on the offensive board. We mentioned a couple of times. They were together in Rutgers. At Rutgers under Greg Schiano, Sherrock actually had, was the offense coordinator, and P.J. Fleck worked under him as the wide receiver coach. So a couple years ago when P.J. got the job at Western Michigan, he had never been a head coach, he called Kirk Sherrock and said, I want you to come with me. Sherrock told us yesterday I had two other offers. Western Michigan would have been the least paying said, I told my wife, who you just saw in the middle of the screen there, Kirk Sharaka, his wife, Kim, is K.J. Hamler, returning the kickoff. Well, I've decided for so long where we live. Here are the pluses and minuses of the three. You choose. She said, let me sleep on it. The next morning, she said, let's go to Kalamazoo, even though it's the lowest bank. He said, why? And she said, you've always said you think P.J. Fleck is going to be a great head coach. Let's go there, help them, and see if that's the way it turns out. Boy, was she right. 13-1 and there last year in Western Michigan. They get the opportunity here in Minnesota. And inching closer to one of the big wins in the modern history of Minnesota football. Well, he had prior view. Good dump off to Journey Brown, but he had his tight end running down the middle of the field. Not sure why Sean Clifford didn't pull the trigger on that one, but he was able to reload and get it to Journey Brown as an outlet for a nice game. 17 yards on the completion. Brown squirts through and then got flat, but he has another first down. Penn State quickly on the move. That's a 12-yard game. That's why it's so important when you're in scoring territory, if you're Minnesota, you've got to go for touchdown. You can't settle for field goals. This Penn State offense is, is too powerful. They can score quickly with the playmakers they have. Devin Ford, a home run hitter at running back, true freshman, comes in. The blitz came late. Clifford got it off, and Hamler goes to the turf and makes another catch. Really good protection. This is a long route. Hamler's running a deep crossing route from one side of the field all the way to the other numbers. That requires a lot of protection. Clifford got it and got the ball to Hamler. The seventh catch of the day, 19-yard game. He has 119 yards receiving. Now Devin Ford. 
for a two-yard gain. Todd, aren't you a little surprised we haven't seen more four? We visited with James Franklin last night. He told us Noah Kane is unlikely to play. He certainly gave the impression that the man likeliest to take the lead was Devin Ford. We thought it's been Journey Brown. We thought we'd see more. I think that Journey Brown's a little older, maybe a little bit more proficient in the pass blocking part. Clifford for Friar Muth. Inside the 10, tackled by Antoine Winfield. First and goal, Nittany Lions responding quickly. Tony Dewar is going to go for an interception. Watch number 16 go for the interception. Instead of the sure tackle, Friar Muth able to turn it in for 10 more yards. Moving quickly. 14-yard gain on the last play. Here's Devin Ford twisted back by Sam Renner. And gone 68 yards in a little over two minutes. Long way to go, just under 12 minutes. Ford. Danced away from Coughlin, crossed the five, and that's it. Winston Delano Bador called the heartbeat of this defense by the defense coordinator Joe Rossi, made the tackle. And I would think, Todd, this might be two down, four down territory, or two plays to get the first down because three points are still down by nine, two scores. Clifford stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Ball came out with the play blown dead. Carter Coughlin and Jamal Teague there. The field as the runner's forward progress was stopped. Fourth and goal. Jamal Teague made a beautiful play. You're hoping that you're going to influence the linebackers with the fake on the jet sweep. But watch Teague on the inside just throws off the block in the center and is able to stop him in the backfield. And he's a backup, Teague, just a sophomore, made only four tackles all year. It's a deep and talented team. Fourth down and goal. Clifford lobs it up for Hamler, and it's batted away. Chris Williamson had the coverage, and Minnesota takes over on downs. The nickelback lined up over Hamler. A perfect play on a good throw. Minnesota holds. You're watching ESPN College Football presented by Track Phone. Part of Veterans Week on ABC <laughs> brought to you by USAA. <laughs> PJ's everywhere. We got PJ Dean working the producer chair down in the truck. DJ Fleck is Philip John Fleck. Rodney Smith carries out to the seven yard line. Our producer Phil Dean is also uh, <laughs> Philip John. PJ's got together this morning. That's awesome. <laughs> That's great. And the attire is a nod to Jim Tressel, yes. who he has mentioned many times, it was a great influence on him. During the year he spent as a graduate assistant under Trestle at Ohio State. Nice nice year, right? mm -hmm. Pretty nice year to be a part. 2006, Rodney Smith dumped by Jan Johnson for a loss. Under 10 minutes to go. Guys, CJ Fleck is such an interesting character. People flock to him and gravitate towards him. What's interesting about him is he actually started out as a sixth grade social studies teacher. That was the career path he was on. He taught ancient Rome. He has been what he describes a very average person all his life, but if you're around him for five seconds, you buy into that energy, and these fans and this fan base are all in. Signed a big contract extension here this week, and I think fans are pretty excited they'll have him for a while. No doubt. He uses the word elite all the time. But everybody in the program should be striving to be elite at everything. He's an elite coach. Morgan throws a flutter ball. Bateman trying to get back to it. There's a flag down. Ball landed out of bounds. Now are they going to... They might have a conversation. Was this deflected, one? Or number two, was it catchable? The ball fluttered. Did it get deflected? Is that why it fluttered? Pass interference. Defense, number 29.
15-yard penalty. You can't make this penalty if you're John Reed. He's their best corner. You got him third and ten, backed up by their own end zone. Now we're told from the truck it was clearly not deflected, so that is... And he altered his course coming back to the ball. I mean, and it was catchable. I mean, it landed close enough to the sideline there to be caught with his feet in bounds. That is the costliest penalty of the game for Penn State. I mean, that is a critical error by a very smart and very good football player in John Reed. There was a question mark during the week with what was reportedly a wrist injury. Obviously playing today. No gain, maybe a yard for Rodney Smith. Here's Cassidy. Thanks, Sean. And now for today's All-State Mayhem moment. Number one, Ohio State just toying with Maryland. Up two touchdowns, and they onside kick it. Blake Cabale kicks it right in the hands of Chris Olave. Buckeyes up 52 nothing. Excuse me, 7 now in the third, guys. Ohio State's the real deal. I mean, they, they are just so complete on both sides of the ball. Minnesota does not play them. We'll possibly see them in the championship game. Penn State plays them November 23rd. DJ Fleck, the clock management, trestle ball as he called it yesterday. Tyler Johnson, the catch. New set of downs for Minnesota. Out to their own 32-yard line and 11-yard play. Tyler Johnson has been their go-to guy for the last couple years. From right here in Minneapolis, North High School. That's Bobby Bell, senior. Bobby Jr., his son, one of my best friends in Kansas City. Bobby, one of the greatest players ever played here, has endowed a scholarship here at Minnesota. And Tyler Johnson has his scholarship. And Bobby is really enjoying what he's seeing today out of this Gopher football team. I love Tyler Johnson here, great young man. Part of the state championship basketball team for the Polars of Minneapolis North High School. And it comes with 7.54 to go, and the Golden Gophers up by 12. Your future. And Coca-Cola, share a Coke this football season with your friends, family, and fans. What a day it has been here in Minneapolis. Gopher fans hoping it's going to be their day from start to finish. Already put Penn State in a very unusual position. Minnesota's led almost the entire game. Entering today's game, Penn State had led for 84% of all the possible minutes in their games played this season. Rodney Smith dropped for a loss. Cam Brown exploded across the line of scrimmage to drop that for about a six-yard loss. Here's today's Pacific Life game summary. Well, it's basically looking at the quarterbacks. Sean Clifford, Tanner Morgan, very similar guys coming into the game. Morgan's day has just been stellar. I mean, 17 of 19, 328 yards, three touchdowns against one of the best defenses in all of college football. Of course, these two don't play opposite each other. They're not on the field at the same time, but they know each other well, both in the yeah. Cincinnati area. Tanner Morgan said yesterday he remembers a youth football game they played in the sixth grade. Here's Muhammad Ibrahim stacked up. It was in the sixth grade, and it, you could tell it still bothered Tanner Morgan. He said he lost to Clifford's team six to nothing on a hook and ladder. Yeah. He also did remember that they beat him the next year. So yeah. He added that one as well. So he's one and one. Said they're actually good friends and uh, familiar with each other, stay in contact with each other. Big play here for Tanner, just to be smart. I mean, your team's got control of the game. Your defense has played well. Be smart with the football here. Not surprised. Look for a moment. He's going to snap it with about 13. The P.J. Flex not going to allow that. That clock's going to run every time while they have this two-score lead. James Franklin's going to use a timeout, his first of three, to stop timeout. that clock. Penn State, this is their first of the half. 6.26 to go in Minneapolis. This season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Minnesota leading 31-29, 6.26 to go. Bear in mind, Penn State has blocked three punts 
this season and in all four kicks the three block punts tied for the national lead. Houston and Nebraska. Good punt by Jacob Herbers. AJ Hamlin got away from it and down it at the 36. Don't forget tonight on ABC and the ESPN app. Clemson ranked number five in the first college football playoff rankings at NC State. Saturday night football presented by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Seven undefeated teams remaining, but obviously we're going to lose two from that ranks, at least two today, because Alabama and LSU are playing each other later this afternoon. And Penn State and Minnesota head to head right now. We can tell you that Baylor trails TCU 9 to 6 in the fourth quarter in Fort Worth. Alex Strazanti is the injured player for Minnesota. Yeah, he was the guy that downed the punt. He actually jumped to catch it because it was bouncing backwards. And when he landed, he landed awkwardly on one of his legs. And unfortunate injury there on the Penn State sideline. Backup linebacker, special teamer from Chaska, Minnesota. You can see he already has a brace on his left knee. So Todd, a 12-point game. I want to go back to the third quarter when Penn State scored to make it 24-19. James Franklin went to two for two. We didn't really have a time to talk about it. Time. I've never really been a proponent of in the third quarter, chasing quote unquote, points. chasing the point. I think it usually comes back to haunt you more than it helps. But if they had kicked that point, it would have been 24 to 20. Minnesota scored, made it 31-20. But the last time Penn State went down there, went for it on fourth and goal. They could have kicked the field goal if they had that point. It would have been 31-23. It's a one-score game. Exactly. They didn't have the option to kick the field goal because they didn't get the two-point run. Right. Had to go for it. So James Franklin will be asked about that decision after the game. Sean Clifford looked around and found his man open. It's Dan Chisena who's on the track team as a sprinter in Penn State, one of the fastest men in the program. He's to the 43 of Minnesota very quickly. A great start to this drive, 21 yards. It's really a nice job by Clifford. He held onto that ball as long as he possibly could before delivering. He's 16 out of 32 for 242. A touchdown and two picks. Deep ball again for the speedy Chisena. Wow. And it's broken up by Cody Durr. Yeah, Joe Rossi told us yesterday, this kid plays the position well. And we have seen that. Run or pass. Chisena's got a step on it. And it's a good throw. But Durr reads the eyes of the receiver and just rips that hand up in there and knocks the ball away. And Chisena, who had two career catches before this drive started, got his third career catch and then was targeted again on the very next play. Trying to take advantage of his blazing speed. Clifford's pass batted down at the line of scrimmage. Knocked down by Sam Renner, and I believe it was caught by one of the linemen. Yeah, which was unfortunate because that becomes a loss of yardage. If it's just incomplete, it's third and 10. Because his lineman caught it, it's now third and 14 instead. Des Holmes was the left tackle on that play who caught the football. Usually a backup. But in there now, crunch time, playing left tackle. Rashid Walker ordinarily is their left tackle. Third down and 15. 5-10 to go. Two timeouts for Penn State. Down by 12. Just inside Golden Gopher territory. Clifford on target. Friar Muth looks like he got the first down. Such a dependable receiver. Pat Friar Muth is a tight end, but he's really just a big receiver. Has excellent hands, has a good feel for zone coverages, sits right down, then the big body's able to stretch it for the first down. He may take a look at this to see if he reached that the first down mark. The previous play was a catch for a first down. The play is under further review. Yeah, I would think so, because from that replay, it didn't look like he quite got to the line to make. We'll take a look at it in the booth. You get another look at it. We'll tell you what happened when we come back. After review by David Nowak, the replay official, the call on the field stands inconclusive, certainly, to change it. So a first down for 
Penn State at the Minnesota 32-yard line. Here's Hamler. A lot of field to his side right there. Sean Clifford steps up in the pocket. Fires on target. Jahan Dotson. Inside the 15-yard line, they'll mark it at the 14. They used Hamler to clear out, and Dotson came on the dig route underneath it and uh, was able to get him the football. 18-yard gain. Another impressive drive by the Nittany Lions. Catch near sideline. Daniel George out of bounds. Six-yard line. Second and two. Clock running. 4.20 to go. Just one touchdown. Four possessions inside. The red zone well below their season average. Last time they got like this, they were able to sneak Nick Bowers, number 83, into the end zone for the touchdown. With the two tight ends on the left. This time it's for him. Where? Batted away by Benjamin St. Juiced. See, that's the advantage of being a 6-3 corner. He was beat on the play, but he's got such length and long arms, even though he's beat, he's able to get there with his length and knock the football away. Exceptionally well done by the graduate student from Montreal, as Todd mentioned earlier, transfer from Michigan. Third down and two, or under four minutes to go. Penn State down by 12. Two timeouts left. Play clock down to four. They're going to have to use a timeout. Don't We're, waste the snap here. I don't think they got it off. Didn't look like they did. Journey Brown walks in. But Sean Clifford is hurt at the end of the play. It was an awkward handoff between he and Journey Brown. It's an official's timeout for an injury. He twisted weird on his right ankle, right foot. Of course, now it's looking more like cramps. Meanwhile, P.J. Fleck has been on the field giving the referee signal for delay a game. He thought that they didn't get the snap off in time. Let's see. One. It's on zero. They hadn't snapped it yet. Penn State catches a break. Carter Coughlin got too far inside. And then you see the nice block by Daniel George on the inside linebacker to secure the edge. Watch number 11. Block right there. And the speed of Journey Brown gets him to the pylon. He's had a career day. Meanwhile, that does not look good at all. John Clifford limping off awkwardly. Fans are booing. A lot of times on that clock, though, the referee will look up and look down, and you get about a half a second leeway on the end of that play clock. It's the back judge's job He's behind the defense. So Journey Brown having a career day, career high, 123 yards rushing. And he scored two touchdowns. Jake Penninger adds the extra point. Three forty-nine to go, a five-point game. Sports Center tonight after Wyoming and Boise State with Kenny Main and Zubin Mahenti. They'll have all the post-game coverage from LSU and Alabama. Full breakdown of this compelling game between Penn State and Minnesota. Also, how good can the James Harden, Russell Westbrook combo be for the Houston Rockets? Sports Center after college football on ESPN and the ESPN app. Well, we thought we were going to have a fourth quarter game. This has been a heck of a football game. Penn State showing some resiliency here in the second half. You know, they trailed at halftime to Buffalo early in the year, 10-7. to 7. That's Will Levis, the backup quarterback. They think very highly of him, but he might be thrust into a critically important situation here. Clifford cannot return. If Penn State gets the ball back, he'd be under center or taking shotgun snaps. And Minnesota with their hands team on the field. I would expect Penn State to kick this ball deep. They've got two timeouts. Their defense has played much better in the second half. I'm thinking they're going to kick this ball deep and try to play defense with those two timeouts and hope that they can get a stop, a three and out. When you're in your hands. 
Giants team, you don't typically have a kickoff return blockable. Bounced down the field. Demetrius Douglas bobbled it for a moment, just went down near the 20 yard line. Here's a look at today's hardest working player brought to you by Duluth Trading Company. Well, it's really two players. It's Tanner Morgan and Rashad Bateman. They're on the same page as this blitz is picked up. Quarterback wide receiver right in sync. Get the ball out before the safety can get over to help. And you've got a touchdown. Then a little bit later, a critical third and ten conversion. Tanner Morgan uses his eyes to move the safety and then Bateman runs by the corner to put him in scoring position again. Those two have been special today. Bateman, seven catches, 203 yards, and a touchdown. Morgan, 339 yards. Rodney Smith dropped for a one-yard loss. Here's Cassidy Hubbard. Thanks, Sean. Number 12, Baylor in a battle all morning, trailing TCU all game down three, 36 seconds to go. John Mayers from 51 yards out, ties it up, and they are headed to overtime. And coming up next here on ABC, Eno Benjamin in Arizona State hosting USC, 3.30 Eastern on ABC or the ESPN app. Sean, cut, and you guys. Well, you talk about great coaching jobs here in Minnesota, certainly P.J. Fleck and what Matt Rule done in, has done at Baylor. Minnesota and Baylor have each won 10 straight games, dating back to last season. And that is tied for the third longest winning streak in the country. Clemson, 24 in a row. Ohio State about to be 15 in a row. They will win over Maryland today. And Baylor and Minnesota. 10 wins each, and the Gophers trying to make it 11 here. They, they, they need to make a couple first downs, and they're going to have to throw the football some with Tanner Morgan. Tanner Morgan's in trouble and sacked. Micah Parsons. Back near the 10 yard line. Timeout, Penn State. This is their third and final first timeout. The center, Connor Olson, got fooled by the quickness of Micah Parsons. He took one false step, and Parsons was around him. That explosive first step that Micah has. And this Penn State defense, which has been much different in the second half than they were in the first half, has come up with more negative plays than they had that entire first 30 minutes. And now they've got their team in a great position to get the ball back with good field position. And it looks like they'll have Sean Clifford, Holly. Sean Clifford had been taken into the injury tent for Penn State. He just came stalking out of the tent with a man on a mission. He's got blood on his jersey. His hands are banged up. He was not limping with that right leg that looked like it had been clamping. And Pat Frymuth, the tight end, just grabbed him. They had a special message. There is juice on this Penn State sideline right now, guys. Yeah, that's a great thing if it was cramping, and that is a likely explanation. Yeah. He seems to be walking around fine now. Third down and 21. Rodney Smith pulls his way back to the 20. Penn State can't stop it, but they have plenty of time with this big strike offense with about three minutes, a little less than three minutes to go when they get it back. They have time and they have momentum because the last couple times they've had the ball, they have moved right down the field on Minnesota. Minnesota playing a little bit of safe coverage, not trying to bring extra pressure on Sean Clifford. And he has kind of picked him apart. No part of the philosophy here is to milk the clock with the lead. You just wonder if they took themselves out of their offensive rhythm in the second half, playing at a slower pace. Negative Jay, plays. Yeah, that's was huge. The punt is muffed by KJ Hamler. And it looked like the Nittany Lions got it back, but it's going to cost them some yardage back inside the 30. It seemed like there was a lot of bodies around Hamler when he tried to field this punt. He's giving the fair catch signal, but it's his own guy, I guess, that is too close to him. Yep. So there's no foul. And he certainly Lutz. touched it. Yeah. Back up wide receiver, primarily a special teams player. He got in the way. Ellis Brooks is going to, fortunately for Penn State, end up on the football. Market at the 28-yard line. So a field goal does Penn State no good. And Sean Clifford take them. 72 yards for a dramatic victory. 
This is what you live for if you're a quarterback. Both Sean Clifford. And he fires on target. Friar Muth, nine yards. Penn State has not led today. They went down 7 nothing, tied it at 7, went down 14 to 7. And they have trailed ever since. Since Minnesota took that 14 to 7 lead with four and a half to go in the first quarter. Clifford. Look out from behind. Got it off with arms around his waist. And it's caught by Jahan Dotson. Tayon Devers had Clifford but couldn't get him on the ground. You got Fryer, Muth, and Hamler both with seven catches for over 100 yards in the ballgame right now for Penn State. Clifford forced to retreat on target. Jahan Dotson inside the 20 and down at the 10 yard line. There is a flag down at the 50 yard line near the far numbers. I believe it's going to be against Minnesota for a hold. Holding defense number six. Penalties decline. First down. Chris Williamson called for holding. It doesn't matter. Yeah, he'll, he's holding on Hamler. There's the penalty. Dodson gets separation from St. Juice, who stumbled. And finally, Dodson with the big play. And we've been wondering where he's been. We know what kind of talent and ability he has. Biggest play of the ball game for the Penn State offense. He's emerging late in this game, a game they have to have. Most certainly with an eye toward the national championship picture. Here's Journey Brown driven back from the 10. Now I wonder, Todd, if you're Minnesota, do you use timeouts? I mean, Penn State has plenty of time. They're at the 10. They're in a win or lose situation. Minnesota might need time on the clock if Penn State scores. I think and, and if they hold Penn State here, there's so little time left, right. they're going to run out the clock either way. On second and nine, down the middle and chopped down Journey Brown by Thomas Barber, who's not getting up quickly. There is a flag down, and the crowd thinks this one's going against Penn State. Pass interference. Offense number 11. 15 yard penalty. Repeat second down. Daniel George was the wide receiver in a short split. He's running straight down the Please field and he initiates contact. Journey Brown came on the option route behind him. That's why he was so open. I think it was the right call. Meanwhile, key member of that defense, Thomas Barber. Minnesota Golden Gopher Legacy. Watch, here's Daniel George. He's going to run and make contact right here, and Journey Brown's going to come in behind him. Good play design, but he goes in and, and blocks two defenders and, and opens up the area for the tailback coming behind him. Good call on the offensive pass interference. Brings the ball all the way back out to the 24-yard line. And a key component on their defense. Five tackles today. Well, and they're already without Kamal Martin, and he's their leader. He's their coach on the field. So even if he's only out for one play, it's a critical play from a leadership standpoint and a communication standpoint. So now they have Braylon Oliver, who is a redshirt freshman and a linebacker, along with Mariano Sori Marin, who is a sophomore. So two youngsters and a linebacker on this critical second down and long play. Four-man rush. Clifford has room. Fires too long for Daniel George. Antoine Winfield has been spectacular today with two interceptions. All over the field, as usual, have the coverage. Beautiful job. We mentioned those two young linebackers. They were in double coverage on Pat Fryermuth on that play. That's why Sean Clifford had to try to go outside. They had his number one target blanketed. Is Antoine Winfield's dad. Great star here. Minnesota with the Vikings. Tremendous college player at Ohio 
State. Three-man rush. Clifford again has time. Throws, and it is intercepted in the end zone by Jordan Howden. John Jahan Dotson thought he got interfered with. He got pulled down by Benjamin St. Juice. I'm not sure if Clifford was throwing this ball timeout. for Hamler Minnesota. or for Dotson. This is their second of the half. This is a 30-second timeout. Watch Dotson get pulled down, and the ball is thrown behind Hamler and intercepted. Not sure if it was going to one or five, but it was behind Hamler, and Howden was there for the third interception of the ball game for Minnesota. In the second of his career, the former walk-on, now on scholarship, sophomore out of Las Vegas. What did P.J. Fleck, what's all over their building, 78% if they do what? Win, the, win the turnover battle, you have fewer missed tackles than your opponent, and you have more explosive plays, and they're going to win. All three. On all three of those, when you do that, you win 78% of the time. The player spotlight brought to you by Wrangler. Rashad Bateman almost set the single game school receiving yardage record held by Ryan Felwell back in the mid 1990s. A game over at the old Metrodome, which no longer exists. He had five catches of 23 yards or more. And how about Tanner Morgan? 18 of 20, 339 yards, and three touchdowns. They rode the boat, and it's for real here, baby. Yeah, make Got room on the boat. There are a lot fewer doubters around the college football landscape when it comes to the Minnesota Gophers than we had at the start of the day. They play for the governor's victory bell, which dates back to 1993 when Penn State came into the Big Ten and their first game at conference was against Minnesota. It's over. One of the biggest wins in school history for the University of Minnesota. They go to 9-0. They beat undefeated previously Penn State 31-26. I am not going down that path that what you just said, but I appreciate it. Uh, first and foremost, got to give Penn State a lot of credit. Uh, playoff team, top four team, slated to be in the college football playoff, deservingly so. James Franklin is one of the best football coaches in the country, one of my really good friends. He's got a really good football team. We knew that we had to be able to play our style of football. There was nothing different about it. It had to be us. We could, didn't have to do anything different. We just had to be able to do it better than we did the week before. I know that sounds cliche and coach speak and gimmicky, but at the end of the day, it's really not. It's just how you win football games. Since January, we've been talking about this word pressure, pressure, pressure. And um, all the players wrote down on a piece of coal last night, which signified carbon, uh, what pressure has taught them since January. And they put it all in this big bucket. And overnight, it turned to this diamond. I don't know if it turned that fast, but we said it did. And uh, that's what they are. They're diamonds. When everybody says they can't do something, when everybody says we haven't played anybody, when everybody says all that, that's great. And look, respectfully so. I mean, I, I appreciate all of your jobs just like you appreciate everybody else's jobs. You have a job to do. I, I, I don't blame you for saying that or seeing that. Um, but what they did tonight was really special. And it shows the culture. It shows the character. character it shows their charisma. It shows their ability to overcome and it showed what they've learned. We had a lot of close games at the beginning of the year, and you're like, why are these games so close? Why are these games so close? That's why. Because this one was close against the fourth-ranked team in America. People ask me where we think we should be ranked. We're 1-0 in the Penn State season. That's all we care about. That's all we care about. We wanted to be 1-0. We haven't talked about the rankings much. We're not sitting here saying we should be upset by them uh, or uh, proud of them or celebrate them. 
It's more of just we wanted to be 1-0. and So many individual uh, performances that we'll talk about here in a second, but first and foremost, we gave a game ball out in the locker room uh, to the state of Minnesota. And I say that because uh, I gave it to President Gable, uh, and hopefully she can pass it on to the governor uh, from our team. We're one Minnesota. You know, before the game, I'm getting text messages from Saunders. Saunders wore maroon yesterday in his game. Uh, that's special. And, and when you're starting to see how this whole thing can really work in this whole Twin Cities area, that's what we're talking about. But our fans were unbelievable today. That's the best college football environment I've ever played in as a head football coach. Because it, it was at home, and it was for us. It was marooned out, and those gold towels were everywhere. And our fans didn't sit down. They stood up. They made noise. They made it difficult for Penn State. And I'm, I'm just so proud to be a gopher. And I speak for our whole team when I say that. But our crowd, our band, you got to give credit to our administration, Mike Erzbicki, for what he was able to do to put together to sell the stadium out. But this is what we can become. You know, we got to let go of, I'm sure there were some people on the final drive said, oh, here we go again. Got to let go of all that. 50 years ago, 40 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago. We got to change at some point. I think this team's proven that, that as we continue to go into the future, we don't have to keep saying things like that. Does that mean you're going to win them all? No. It doesn't mean that. But they're doing a lot of special things that you can keep building on to make your culture stronger and your program stronger and make it more of a national brand. I'm so proud of our coaches. I'm so proud of our administration. So proud of our players. They just have incredible resolve. Their response mechanism. Our culture is what it is. It's people. It's vision. It's work. It's result and response. That's what it is. And they respond like no other team I've ever seen. And they deserve all the credit. I just... I'm lucky enough to talk to you at the end of the game. That's basically all I do. So, uh, very proud of them. Historic win for our program in this year. And uh, we got the bell back. And I think that's I think that got lost in the mix. Somehow, some way, they I didn't even. They're like, "Where's the bell?" They asked me at one point. I don't, I, don't ask me. And uh, but I'm very proud. But you got to give Penn State a lot of credit. That's a really good football team. And uh, we're humble. We're hungry. And we'll just continue to change our best. With that, open up for questions. Hey. Hi. You think your quarterback ever had a better day than Morgan? <clears throat> and did you think he could pass against Penn State the way you did? Well, first of all, Tanner Morgan, we've talked since day one. He's a winner. Intangibles through the roof. A guy that you want to marry your daughter. He's, uh, he, he is. I mean, I have a six and five year old, so definitely not mine. But. <laughs> somebody else's daughters, uh, but I will say that he's special. He's special. Again, he's two-star and a half, maybe three-star. Some people called in, maybe got him a four-star one day, somebody in his town. Uh, but he knows how to take programs from where they are and take them to where they always dreamed of being. He's a winner. And he was 20 of 22. You've seen him do it against Purdue. We knew we were going to have to throw the football. Yeah, you saw their D-line. You saw what they looked like. They're tough, they're long, they're strong. Uh, we knew we were going to have to mix it up. I thought Kirk Sherrock called an unbelievable game. Unbelievable. Flawless. We have one bad play, we fumble. If we don't fumble, I, don't think it's, I think it's not as close as that. But we do. But this team came back and responded. But Kirk Sherrock was able to be able – he put together the un, most unbelievable game plan for the situation. It was right up Kirk's alley because here's what we did. Wednesday, last Wednesday, we all left for recruiting. Well, Kirk didn't. Kirk was by himself. He's in his element. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I, I'm not sure if he went home, but he was by himself. And that's Kirk. Kirk loves to be by himself. He got more work done than, than anybody in the entire building probably for the last six months by himself. He just loves that. He loves sitting in his hole watching film, and it showed. I thought our coaches coached really hard today. We had to find a way to you know manage the clock the best we possibly could. Uh, especially towards the end, you know, we had to make some decisions you know, to be able to find a way to go get a first down. And we knew if we just run it, run it, burn their timeouts, we didn't have a shot. So we had to be able to find a way to get a first down. But players made big-time plays, really proud of them. And uh, Tanner Morgan's one of them. Next question. PJ, did you get an interception uh, and a touchdown drive right off the start? What does it say about this team being ready for this moment? They're ready to play. We talked about them being the reason. Our leadership council meeting this week was about the reason. 
players are the reason. Coaches get a lot of credit, but players are the reason. You have to be responsible enough and confident enough that when the catch has to be made, the interception has to be made, the gap has to be filled, that you're going to be the reason that we either have success or you're going to have to be the reason why we fail. And you got to be a handle that responsibility. So we showed them this compilation of all these things that have happened over the course of sports that people were the reason they won and people, they were the reason they failed. But there was a fail and a succeed on either side. And we studied that and we talked about we need to be the reason. And it starts with our leaders. And our leaders tonight were the reason. Antoine Winfield Jr., Jordan Howden. Uh, you look at uh, on off Tanner Morgan, Rashad Bateman, Tyler Johnson, Rodney Smith. Our whole O-line were captains this week. All six of them. Because they deserve it. They are. They're captains. They're leaders of this football team. And we got to continue to develop that leadership as we keep going forward. Speaking of your O-line, you guys, you've talked all week about their defensive front. Um, talk about how your O-line played today. Well, I thought that, you know, we had, we have two sacks. Or we had one sack. One, and it was kind of a great decision by Tanner to kind of eat that one and go down. I thought we did a tremendous job of pass protection, but it goes more of, you know, those guys working really hard. But it goes back to the game plan. It goes back to Brian Callahan, Kirk Sharaka, Kenny Burns, Clay Patterson, talking about protection. The ball had to get out of our hand, out of our hand, out of our hand. Move the pocket if we possibly could, uh, but we had to get the ball down the field, then we had to mix it with the run game and the RPO game. And people talk about how simple we are. We are. I, I, I'm not sure how to answer that question. People ask me all the time, you're simple, aren't you? Like, yes. Why? I don't, I, I don't know how to answer that question. We're just us. And uh, we find ways to mix it up. I think our offensive staff has a great uh, ability to be able to, if you're going to do A, we're going to do B. You're going to do B, we're going to do C. And then continue to have answers for things. And that's why you spend 70 hours week game planning. Uh, I thought our defensive staff did a tremendous job, too, because they are very talented. I mean very talented on offense. A quarterback's a really good player. KJ special. He made huge plays tonight. Um, and then I'm telling you, their tight ends are special players. Special players. Coach, I think they were inside the fives three times, and you stopped it. Can you talk about that? It's a, it, it's a mentality. You know, we talk about keeping people out. We don't have this bend, don't break mentality. I don't believe in that. I don't want to bend at all, right? I don't, I don't want to bend or break. I just want to stop them, right? I want to stop them. Hold them to field goals the best we possibly can. And that's where I think our team's playing the best right now when we get inside the green zone. We call it the green zone, you call it the red zone. We're coming away with points and we're stopping people and giving them the most limited amount of points as they possibly can. Uh, we stopped them on fourth down. I thought that was critical. Uh, they were one of two. That last fourth down was a critical stop. Um, you know, we got to continue to get better, though. And that's one thing I love about this football team. We got, we got a long way to go. How do you switch kickers to the <laughs> And then what gave you the confidence that you could come into such a big game like this? Well, it's, it's not – Lance had a little bit of a, a health issue that we were dealing with, but probably could have went. But I thought Brock had a tremendous week of practice, and I figured same thing with Kamal. Kamal's ready to go, but he got ready to go today. And there's no way Mike Sipniak, our trainer, and me can look him in the eye and say, you have not practiced the majority of the week, and you'd be ready to play right now. It's too much football down the road, not only for his college career, but his NFL career. I'll never put a kid in jeopardy like that ever. And I know it hurt him. And it devastated Kamal. I mean, you're looking at your own son telling him he can't play. It's like telling your son he can't go outside and play. You got to stay in, you know, time for dinner and then go to bed. And he's looking at you like, you know, he's got tears in his eyes. Uh, but I told him one day you'll understand. Uh, in terms of Brock, all the confidence in the world, he came out there and true pro. I mean, just I believe in our team. I'm, <laughs> I want to tell you, I believe in him. And uh, we're going to have success with me believing him, and we could fail with me believing him. But. I'm going to believe in our players. I'm going to believe in our kids. I'm going to believe in what they do and how they do it. Along that line, 9 and 0, you've been there before, but I think it's, what, 115 years since that's happened here. Did you, I know you look one game at a time. Did you think at the beginning of this year that 9 and 0 was a realistic possibility? Inside our walls, yes. I don't think we shared that with you because uh, you, you would have thought we're crazy. We talked about that inside our walls in January. Uh, and we talk about it in a very unique way. We talk about it through our cultural perspective of what we need to do for that to happen. The players have to say they want that to happen. Then they have to commit to that happening, which is a very difficult process because everything they've done this entire offseason has been harder and also smarter. Uh, I got to give a lot of credit to Dr. Michael Howell um, from the University of Minnesota, our sleep doctor that's right here on campus. Uh, we thought we had an advantage because we practice in the mornings. And we have these 
really kind of these real LED type lights all over our facility that wake you up faster to get your uh, circadian rhythm going faster. Again, I, I taught sixth grade social studies, uh, but it was pretty special for him to invest the time he did to meet with our players and talk about sleep patterns. And I thought the health and wellness week last week really paid off mentally, physically, and emotionally. And I thought our players were ready to play. Uh, this team is ready to play no matter what. And they get prepared and they're professional about it. PJ, how much has the connectivity of this group fueled their success? Well, it's everything. Connectivity is everything on a team. You're either a team or a group. You get to decide which one you're going to be, right? We're a true team. This is the, one of the best teams I've ever coached. One of two teams that I consider the greatest team I've ever coached as a head coach uh, because they are connected. Uh, they love each other. Love is a word we throw around all the time. Love is sacrifice. Forget about me. I love you. The family theory. And they truly believe that. There's a lot of people that say those things but don't really mean it. Like they truly invest in that, which is very difficult because, as Heather always tells me, the hard part about being the standard, you're the standard all the time. And you can never not be the standard. And I think with young people, they always want to break. They always want to rest. They always want to be comfortable. And you're fighting human nature all the time. But this team is very, 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 very close. And I'm proud of them for that. Uh, there's so many special moments that have happened this year. Uh, and players deserve a lot of credit. I mean, you look at, you know, Braylon Oliver and Sir, uh, Mariano Sori Marin come in for Kamal Martin. You know, we're not even at full strength. And to do what they did defensively just shows we are that family room type defense that we talk about and that family type team. We're supposed to have the best defensive line in the country. I kind of thought your offensive line played them pretty good. Well, they do have a tremendous defensive line. You can't take that away from them. It's the biggest challenge we've had up to date on the defensive line. I respect them wholeheartedly. They play really hard. They're tough. They're long. They're strong and very fast and elusive. They can all rush the passer. They can all stop the run. They can do it all. Uh, but our team found a way to do what we do just a little bit better than what they do really well tonight. That, that's what that means. And that's why you play one game. You get one chance, and you have to find a way to be 1-0. and And uh, today, we were better than Penn State. Speaking of, speak, speaking how of, often have you envisioned that scene at the end of the game with everyone on the field in that moment? How often have you seen that before today? How much have I envisioned it or how much have I actually seen it? How much have you envisioned that? In the uh, that's why you take a job. You know, I've told Heather numerous times, and I remember taking the job here, and before we took the job, she looked at me and said, are you sure you want to do another year one? Uh, because at the time, there was a lot of chaos going on here. There was a boycott and all those other things, and you're like, do I really want to run into that fire? Because there's a certain amount of wins, yeah, and everybody's going to have the perception, but then there's this also divide. And um, that was the whole vision, to be able to have that field swarmed on a top five team in the country and to put us undefeated. And when everybody thought that, you know, told me, don't take the job, don't take the job, my life is usually about don't do that, don't do that. Okay, I'll do that. And that uh, sounds like a good job for me. Um, and that was the vision. Now, there's a lot more we want to accomplish. That's not the end-all, be-all. But what I do want to do is raise the expectation of the University of Minnesota. This is about connecting people. There's going to be another coach after me. There were coaches before me. But the scene in the locker room of former players brought a tear to my eye. The Eric Deckers of the world. All those guys in that locker room, we've had seven head coaches in around 14 years. It's hard to gain traction with former players. Everybody's connected to someone else, and we feel like I played for that guy. Uh-uh. You played for our Minnesota. That's who you play for. And I just get to represent that. But part of the reason why we signed the contract was we want to bring everybody back. We want everybody to be like tonight every single game. We want all of our alums to feel at home here, not because of who you played for. This is your home. I'm just here to be able to do everything I can with the staff and with the group of men every single day to provide a culture that everybody can be a part of and everybody can row the boat and everybody can use that in their life. Come back here and then we can be able to, we're one now. And we can create some type of dynasty. You can create some type of cultural sustainability because your alums are the most important part of what you do. And that locker room was special because of that because we connected people. And that's what wins like this do. Whoever you played for, you're still a gopher. And I know I might be a little bit different, but I don't know what, how different I really am. I don't see what you see. But just maybe, just maybe, our row the boat different might be the way. And maybe we're just ahead of the game. We got to think that way. 
Because the way we do it is so unique and so different, and it's not for everybody, and I get that. But let's step outside of our box. It's 2019. We're getting ready to go 2020. It's just, it's just different. And one thing I love about our program, our, culture, our coaches, our administration, we evolve. United are we. We are one. Our Minnesota. And we're going to push that forward. And I'm going to continue to push it forward. I couldn't be more proud of our players. Thank you all for being here. Thanks for covering us. Thank you for all the things you put in the paper, whether it's criticism or whether it's, it's, it's positive. You have a job to do, and I respect that wholeheartedly. You're teaching our young players about life, how to handle the adversity, how to handle the critics, how to handle the success. You're doing your job at an elite level. You are. Because you're shaping our young men of how to handle all that. And some people don't get the training like you do here at the University of Minnesota. Some places protect people or they protect the team. You take it for exactly what it's worth. And our players get to grow up in that. They get to see real-world articles and real-world opinions. And it means a lot to me. So thank you so much for helping our team grow up. We're all in it together somehow, some way. I'm thankful to be the head football coach here. But this is about the players. Today is about the University of Minnesota and every player here and every fan. And that's what it needs to be about. 1-0 Penn State season. Row the boat, Sky Imago Gophers. Thanks.